Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to episode eight of Gnomes, Tomes, and Catacombs. Apparently Discord did a big update and it completely messed up the lagginess of all the cameras, so we had to switch over to Zoom. Sorry we're starting later than usual today. Um, but yeah, we're here now and go ahead, Neil. Hello. Um, why don't we just hop into game? We last left off with you guys in Pernissus, and you were speaking to a, a contact of Wyatt's, and you went to bed, woke up the next morning to hear about a, a gnome beaten to death in the streets. And as you're sitting around and waiting, uh, you're approached by a figure, an older man in his probably 60s or 70s, who comes over to the table at the wench's whale where you're staying and introduces himself to you. Hello there, he says with a bit of a cheery, gruff voice. Uh, hello? You're the one <clears throat> Rosetta said needed a, a lift off this place, huh? Heading out to the Talons, are you? That would be our mission right now, correct? Excellent. Good. But we'll be ready this evening. We'll head out right before dusk. Just as the sun's beginning to go down. Want to get off the mainland before tomorrow morning. That sounds Meeting good. down by the docks this evening. I'll see you there. And you believe you can secure a safe passage without alerting any of the uh, surrounding soldiers or army or infantrymen about our position? It's what I do best. Okay. He gives you a wave and walks out. Okay. Leaving that was convenient. <laughs> yep. You, uh, four of you are sitting at your table with people hanging out, having a good time, getting raucous early in the morning. What would you like to spend this day doing? Um, we can investigate the gnome that died, or... So, I... St um, I think we should probably just lay low until we leave tomorrow. It's tempting to investigate the death of the gnome, but I, I wouldn't want to risk us getting caught up in anything here before we take I'm off. I'm gonna go out and shop. Yeah. I want to shop too. Okay, I go with Gerald, and we're gonna go shopping. We're gonna go shopping. For new clothes. Shopping for new clothes. I want spells. Oh, uh, so we're clothes. on different pages here, but... No, we'll go together to both places. Okay. Okay. All right, shopping spree has started. Now, Pernissus is a port town facing the east, so it has all sorts of early access to goods. Anything that comes to Drekus, well, I shouldn't say anything, but many things that come to Drekus from out of, uh, out of the country come through this port. So you've got all sorts of exotic clothing options to go with. Um, what are you looking for, Midori? Dude, are there like fishnet stockings? <laughs> yes, there are. Okay, I'm yes. gonna get one of those. Excellent. I'm, I'm gonna write this down so I can draw it later. All right, I want to get fishnet stockings. I want a Release new. Release the pogs, dude. I want a new cloak, like a black cloak, but like a really feminine cloak with a ribbon at the top uh, in the front. What color is the ribbon? Okay. It's red, huh? obviously. What color is the ribbon? Ooh, I like red. Blood red. Let's go with blood red ribbon. Stupid question, Steve. Black what color are the fish? Ribbon? Are the fishnets black? Yes. Ooh, black. Okay, I understand. And I want black boots as well. With a bit of a heel, but not too much because she doesn't like. I don't like walking in heels. Mhm. Mm sure. You can get nice, shiny black leather boots yeah. that lace all the way up. You're you're thinking like um just yeah, short. Yeah, one of those like gothic like laced boots. Yeah, you, you probably mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. My wife has a pair. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, and then maybe like get another bag, like a like a more you know fashionable bag. I'm tired of carrying the monkey. Do you Whatever want, like, a, a back sack or, like, a satchel? A or satchel what's... would be really cute. I'm gonna get a satchel. Excellent. Like, just, like, a brown satchel would be kind of cute there. Yeah. All right, I'm good. Suede on the inside, boiled leather on the out? Sure. Or not boiled, but, um, what do you call it? Polished leather and... on the outside? Hand. That would work. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get one black ribbon for my hair. I'm gonna start wearing my hair up this time. Excellent. Uh, what color is Midori's hair to begin with? Teal. Like teal. Mm. You really? I would have been making from age so much or... for this. What? Huh? Is that from age? No. It's just, okay. it's a fantasy world. Like, it, it can be any color I want it to be, right? Yeah. Captain okay. Bad Brad Barbo is uh, right colorblind. Teal. Okay. Because like, we've been journeying together for a long time, my hair is, has grown by now, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to try it up. Yeah. Perfect. Great. I'm good. 
Excellent. Oh. And Mylixia, what are you looking for? You said you're looking for spells. I want a hat first. How about that? You can go to the haberdashery. Yeah. What? It is haberdashery. It's a That's place a that sells hat. hats. I want a red hat. Aww. A yeah. triangular red hat. The woman that runs the store is named Minnie. She's a, a fairly large yet short woman. And she has a whole selection of red hats for you. Uh, she's got red hats with letters. She's got red hats without letters. She's got baseball caps. She's got pointy wizard hats. She's got like broad bimmed, uh, not brim, bimmed, brimmed farming hats. What are you looking for? Give me a style. 10 gallon hat. Um, how about this hat? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I don't know if I can link this. Something that is like a big triangle hat. Like this. Oh, yeah. She nods and says, you know, <laughs> I should have known when you walked in that you would be looking for this. Hold on. And she, well, no, come with me. And she leads you to a, a small door in the side of the haberdashery. It's really small. It's like, you know, three feet tall only. Um, mm -hmm. And she just like get down on her knees to open it for you and motions you in. And inside is a room filled with brown pants, blue vests, and pointed red conical <laughs> hats. You're kidding me. I'm not even kidding you. This is amazing. Yeah. And they come in all different styles. You know, you've got your silk blue vests. You've got your corduroy blue vests. You've got your burlap blue vests. Those are the most popular and the most uh, fashionable. Burlap is in fashion this season. Everyone gets everything made out of burlap these days. Okay. Oh, well, I can't complain with the fashion. All right. Burlap on the will... outside, suede on the inside, or do you like silk on the inside? Silk How do you on like... the inside. All right. Silk and burlap. Uh, are you just want the hat or you want a coat and pants and uh, wooden shoes too? I want the full suit. Only then will I look cute. She <laughs> lets you browse. Uh, you'll notice there is no other exit from this room. You have to come back out the way you came in, but you can browse and mix and match everything you want. That mini here. So works as a, a gnomist on the side of her haberdashery. <laughs> Excellent. Do you want a fedora with me, Log? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. And then I would like to go to the spell shop after I shop. Sure, but most importantly, you're getting... Let's talk about your little outfit here, because it's important yes. to get these details right. You're getting burlap on the outside, uh, silk on the inside for the coat, for the, the vest, right? What about your hat? Do you have any particular makes, models, materials, specialties? There are hats with like pockets inside. There's hats with pockets on the outside. Some of them have feather. Some of them have a bit of a brim. What are you looking for here? Can I get the silk inside to have a secret pocket for my 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 burlap silk shirt? The only question is how many secret pockets do you want? I mean, at least two. Well, they come in in two, ten, and one hundred. One. Okay, <laughs> I'll take two. You'll Excellent. Take two. Okay. I'll take two. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Wait, uh, what's the price increase for a hundred? Not very much. It's more of like a, a fashion and style thing. In fact, they're essentially the same price. I'm I'm taking a hundred. A hundred okay. pockets. Yes. Or well, right can more. I buy a? Can I get a fedora too? You may buy a fedora. Yes. I'm gonna buy one for lock too. I'm not gonna Excellent. wear it, but okay. Uh, so you get the the vest with the pockets. What sort of hat are you getting? I also want, how many pockets can I get in the hat? Uh, the pocket can have one, two, four hat pockets. The hat, yeah, four pockets per hat. Done. Okay. And for your pants, uh, are you going with burlap pants on the outside as well, or? I am. Okay, burlap vest, burlap pants, and cobble uh, cogs? I need some black boots. Black I boots, think okay. they're, yes. All right. Unfortunately, this shop doesn't have black boots for you, but you can find it somewhere else. Why don't you pay out, uh, I don't know, like 400 copper for all of this? Because it's well made. My quest continues for the black boots. We're not done yet. OK, I will pay. That's four gold, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, done. Excellent. OK. 
Would anyone else like to do any other fashionable shopping while we're here? Your clothes have been tattered and they're blood stained and they're cut open and they're ripped from all the, the things you've been doing. You've been using the same set of clothes for like a couple of months of travel now. Oh, disgusting. Get a wardrobe change. Mm-hmm. Locke, I know you are all about that wardrobe change. Nope, I'm good. My current sure? clothing, okay? This is serious business, okay? It's not you time to be playing haircut, fashion Locke. games. You, nope. I, I look over at his, at him and, and I look him down with a disdainful look in my eyes, like that condescending look. I'm like, you you should you should change your clothes. You've been wearing the same thing for weeks and months. It's disgusting. You smell like dead fish all we, the time. We and change and clean our clothes. It's possible to do that without purchasing a new wardrobe. You've been, you've been wearing the same set of True. clothes for so long. Like, don't you want to look a little cooler? I mean, I don't know. If we make Could it back the from the talons without any of you retreating or acting as cowards, I'll buy a new wardrobe, okay? You can pick out the clothes yourselves, Midori. Can I buy the, um... Can I buy the Captain Hook kind of, uh, look? Yes. Describe yeah. it to all of us, because maybe someone's never seen Hook or Peter Pan. Okay. Um, but it's no. gonna be, like, a big, bright red, uh, kind of jacket. With, mm -hmm. like, a nice white, um, kind of handkerchief-esque. Um, then bluish tights and then like pinkish uh what are those like socks i'm colorblind i'm those so colorblind but, all right yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. going for like pinkish tights a red coat a white crevasse cravat yeah. and a, a three point hat does he have a uh he does not no, have he's a just got a regular hat got a regular hat yeah i'll go with that excellent do you want the feather in it as well uh yeah oh okay, you should just cool. like look like this guy the actual I loved this movie, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of near that, but not exactly. Solid. You get the gold trim, and the tassels, and the fringe, and the frills, and the lace. Uh, your costume is going to cost you quite a bundle, though. It's going to cost right. you, like, 800 copper. Okay, so 8 gold? 8 gold. Yeah, I will easily fork over the money. Done. Uh, All right, you looks look so good. Three of you look fantastic right now. Um, Is Lily's new outfit really that bad? No, it's great. You're the one that's standing out. Yeah, I got. Oh, I, yeah, I see ya. He tried to make a funny. Yeah, no, I mean, it was ha -ha. okayly funny, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right, Gerald. It's time for your, your spell shopping, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this so. Is one of the towns that has a uh, a public wizard shop here. It's a little old magic shop nestled away against the, the back of a hill. There's some plants growing on it, like a, a small garden growing on the hilltop with a fence around it and a scarecrow planted in the middle of it. Except you notice the scarecrow has like painted on eyes and the painted on eyes seem to kind of be looking around as if it's guarding the, the hilltop with the garden on it. That's but so cool. You can cool. head inside and there is a, a young boy behind the counter. He's got a, a small little bow tie on, uh, pimples all over his face, like a shock of yellow hair kind of coming off one side and a bit of a cow's lick. Uh, but other than that, his clothes are nice. He's got big cuffs and cuff links and buttons that are nice and shiny and recently polished. And he says in his, pre in his pubescent broken voice, hi there, how's it going? Hello, young girl. Um, I have quite the question. Have oh, you a spell? Oh, I see. Well, I have the question. M might you have a wizard spell named Suggestion? Well, that's a great suggestion if I've heard one. <laughs> I got you oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, let me see what we have in our inventory, he says, and pulls out a big leather tome, smacks it on the table, and I kind of little plume of dust comes out and he flips it and starts churning pages for a moment while he looks through it. Ah, suggestion. Yeah. We, <clears throat> that's one of the spells that we sell here. Indeed. Oh, very good, very good. Um, how about a spell to make someone quite large? Um, perhaps that would help Yes. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> you have it? That's a common spell that gnomes ask for around here. Yep. Yes, yep. well, I need it for Definitely. something. 
I, you're looking for general enlargement, right? Not <clears throat> feature specific enlargement. Large or small, I want it all. Right, right. Just, we have a, in the large spell that makes you bigger, but it makes you bigger proportionately everywhere, right? That's the plan. Indeed. Good. Okay. Because we've had people coming in asking for enlarged spells, and turns out they wanted to just enlarge specific things, like, you know, an extra big thumb or whatever. It must also make them small. So that's not all the spell can do. Uh, yeah, and enlarge and reduce. Yeah, I got We got your back, man. We got it. Oh. Quite good, quite good. And and what would the price be for these spells, pray tell? Uh, why don't you let me look at your book and we'll we'll see what you got. And if you have anything we don't, we'll we'll trade. Else we can sell. Okay. Um, I'll I'll give him. I'll show him my book. Okay. He plops it down and starts flipping through the pages, nodding to himself every now and then, uh, chuckling at the little notes you have drawn in the margins. <laughs> Let me take a look at your spell list and see if you have anything exotic or rare in it. <laughs> These are all three. Ooh, Tensor's Floating Disc. Do they have that on hand? Yeah, they have that on hand. Uh, la la la. Presentation, Misty Step, Web, Blur, Cloud of Daggers, Knock, Dark Vision. Ooh. Dark Vision? They do not have Dark Vision, so they will trade Ooh. you Dark Vision for either Suggestion or Enlarge Reduce. Okay. Um, I'll do that trade for Enlarge or Reduce, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, so they will give you a copy of the spell written down on a scroll, which you will then need to spend some time memorizing, of course. Sure. Okay. Same rules as before. Okay. And... Um... Uh, they don't have, you don't have anything else that they want to trade for, for suggestion. So you can mm -hmm. try and buy it straight up, but it's going to be, uh, expensive. Okay. Very how expensive. how expensive? It's going to be 200 gold. Okay. And what would be, let's see. Um, I'd also like to look at, um, invisibility. Would that be the same price or... No, they they have invisibility, but uh, uh <clears throat> oh, that's that's one of those spells that I'm not authorized to sell. I, you, let me go get the the shopkeeper for you, he says, and he goes and rings a big bell, bang, 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 back and forth, and uh, a few moments later, a wizened older man leaning heavily on a cane with a white beard that dangles down between his knees, kind of hobbles in from a back door behind the kid and up to the table and. Shoes the kid away and says, Hello there, Master Gnome. I hope oh, you make yourself at home. Oh, very good. I see that you rhyme. Good day. Um, it is I am enjoying my stay. In your uh, shop. And I wondered uh, um if you had some good spell drops. Uh, of course we do, of course. We have many, many spells. Billy, what, what here was the young man wanting? And Billy, you know, explains what was going on, the, the state of the business thus far, and the old man nods and says, Well, I'm sorry, invisibility is a dangerous spell, you know. Last time I sold an invisibility spell, it was to a young man, and he was found in the women's bath. Set himself up there and just stayed until he fell asleep and his spell broke. Terrible thing, terrible, terrible thing. Um, <clears throat> what, what, what is your purpose for this this spell well a spell that would help me disappear would make other people realize that i'm not here i would never do anything so dreadful i fear i would do something that would allow other people to stay safe um in the uh there's not a lot of things that rhyme with that there's yes but i would never i would never court the spell with a young waif hmm Mm, good, good. That's what I like to hear. You look like an honest fellow. Tell me, what is your goal in life? Well, I do love to explore, and I've been looking to find out more and more about the wonderful world above. For you see, I come from down below. <laughs> I do yeah. know a man who comes from down under. I get it. Really? Who, pray tell, is oh, this fellow as well? 
He's a, a, a musical gnome uh, of sorts. Plays a, a guitar. Indeed, I might know him, for I play the bagpipe, and my tunes are actually quite hype. Mm, excellent. Yes, yes. He, he was with a group of people, and they were always at work. All, all five men. Anywho, enough of enough of uh, old friends bypass. Uh, you seem like a, a surprisingly good fellow. I, mm, just, I'm going to need you to tell me honestly now. And he pulls out a pen, and pulls out a small notepad from the side, and uh, I need your your name, the name of your family, your town of birth, and where you currently reside. Just just in case there's any robberies nearby, and I need to explain to the police. Why I sold an invisibility spell to a complete stranger. Um, of course, of course. Well, um, I am Jerry Gnot. <laughs> Jerry Gnot. Yes, and uh, my um, hometown is a young town named um, Akanon in the um, far mountains of the region Khan. Of Khan, you say? I'm not familiar with any region of Khan. Is that, is that on Solemn? It is a place um, deep below. Uh, oh. So not all who may know it are not the gnome. Mm, that didn't make any sense at all, but I understand. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Good, good. <laughs> and in a, what kingdom is that? He says, fumbling through his notes, quickly jotting these things down. Yes, yes. Um, kingdom, indeed. Uh, Mysteria, I believe, is what you're looking for. Okay. And is this accurate information? Because you're Gerald... I'm completely making this up on okay, the phone. Okay, because Jerry yeah. Knott is almost like Gerald... What is your last name? Jerry oh. Gnott. Gnott, right. But I'm Gerald Knott, yeah. Right, and you're not from Akanon in con are you right you're you're lying to the old man yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm writing down a fictitious name yeah perfect okay <laughs> he accepts it all and he'll sell you the invisibility spell at for 300 gold i can, um i'll negotiate him down can i try to oh, i'll do it in character um uh oh well, pray tell that that is um a little too much gold um i'm afraid for um this old gnome to be uh told Perhaps the spell could be sold um, in exchange for um, something else you would need done. Um, and then we could have one ideal instead of none. Well, this is a store. Do you have something to sell me in exchange? Hmm. I might indeed. Uh, let me take a look through my um, various things. Ah, I see this. And I... I, I... What, I pull out the, the old shaman stuff that I have. Mm. Um, a rare staff from down below. Um, a tomb from long ago. And here is this funny hat. And you may like that. Very nice. But I'm afraid we don't deal in smelly staves and hats. Oh, no, no. This is no smelly staff, my friend. Um... From a very old mage, this is from at a deep, dark, t um, deep, dark tomb, me old chum. This is a magical staff and a magic hat, and you're trading it for a single spell. Ah, but it is not of any magic kind. But it does have. It is a nice find uh, that perhaps some wizard would like to buy. That comes along uh, next, after. So he my. holds the. The stick I, you have and the, the hat you have. And they're nice. Looks at him and sets them down again and goes, I, I, I'm sorry. If you had maybe a small magic trinket here or there or a potion, I, I would be willing to trade, but not for trifles. We deal with mm. magic and magic accessories. Wait, I thought potions didn't exist. Potions exist, but they're just not Boy, usually not. available in stores. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Difficult to produce. Well, uh, run along then, little one. Hmm. I don't think we will find a deal. But Perhaps. should you come across any trinkets, come on back and we'll trade. Very Whatever well, old man. Near the gnome? 
Um, me? Gnome, how important is this spell? I'll show him my ring or whatever. Oh, not not worth not that. that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, um, we'll we'll get it. We'll get it back someday, my friend. Um, when we come back through these parts again. Wonderful, wonderful. Have a good trip. See and you to you, time. I wish a good day and a good and thank you for the good parlay. How uh, uh, locked work. down does this shop look? It's got a magical <laughs> scarecrow on top, watching their garden. The inside doesn't have any obvious defenses, but. You'd be a fool to try something. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it looks like you've done your clothing shopping and your magic shopping. Is there anything else you want to do with your day today before you hop on the boat and sail your way across the sea to the Talons, where you will find hopefully a clue about what Major Tavington is doing? That I'm sorry, Colonel Tavington is doing over there. I'm gonna see if Midori wants to go out for like a, a dinner. How uh? Like colleagues, yeah. How do you Strictly how do you ask me? Uh, our right, Midori like to go have some fresh seafood i know the best places in earnestness oh i mean just 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 us just just us uh, uh yeah just just us but stri strictly business you know oh yeah platonic right yes yes, yes. yeah yeah I I, I I i guess i could make some time tonight yeah i'll see you at eight uh, okay <laughs> that's pretty cute Thank you. Um, in the meantime, between it, uh, but before their date, Neil, um, mm -hmm. is there would there be um, anything that our characters would know that we would need to buy for the talents, like any kind of survival gear or anything like that? Um, that is a fantastic question. Oh, you're so on top of your shit. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I was wondering if you guys were just going to show up unprepared or not. Um, oops. Let's bring us all over towards the talons and this region. So we can see that they are snowy lands. They're cold as balls. Uh, they're rocky. They're essentially like a mountain range that was sunk below the sea 1,500 years ago when the gods got really pissed at all the people in the world and sort of broke the world and kind of split uh, continents apart and lowered mountain ranges and created deserts and all sorts of awful, terrible things. Uh, so there was once a civilization on here that's long been lost. You figure you're going to need food and some form of warmth if you're going to be out in the cold for a long time. And then um, I don't know what you're going to be doing while you're there. So there might be other specialty supplies. Like climbing stuff? Or is it? You might need climbing stuff if you want to climb a mountain. Uh, these are pretty what, craggy. What are we? We're going there to meet someone or are we going there just to discover? We don't know why we're going there, right? Right, so you've been know. told that uh, Colonel Tavington sent a detachment to go look for something on the Talons. And it seems to be related to the search at the the Draken Ridge, where you found the vampire Cassandra. Okay. So you've been looking at both of these areas quite heavily. So I'll start, I think we should um, all start like, um, like, like if I, I wanted to like go around to the party and um, ask them if I can just like start buying things for them since they're they're out on a date and Steven's doing something else mm -hmm. or a block, sorry. Um, Is it possible to like enchant my cloak to warm me or something like that? Uh, there are specific spells that will do that. And then there's also like you creating magic items at higher levels. Mm, so okay, you don't have a mind. specific spell. No one can take care of everything. So large fur cloaks for everyone, or fur cloaks of size? Um, yeah, get one for Dominic the donkey, too. OK, yeah, I'll get one for, so that's five people and the donkey, or four people. Yeah, in the we have to bring him as dumb yes. as it is. You have <laughs> to need, bring like, Dominic? Why do you have to bring we, Dominic? <laughs> we can't carry that. We need him for like to carry shit for us. Oh, because you guys don't <laughs> ever want to be encumbered. Well, yeah. that's a good question to have right now, is. <laughs> Will he let us bring it on the boat? You can definitely bring it on the boat. It's a small <clears throat> sloop that you're going to be on. It, it'll, you'll have to like tie the donkey up and lay him down on the ground so he doesn't freak out and jump He's off. He's the best donkey in the land. He's very chill. He's been trained. Um, but Dominic the donkey does create certain problems when you travel with him, right? You're not going to be able to be very stealthy with Dominic. And yeah. sometimes if you're in a hurry and he's stubborn, you might be a little bit slowed. In large overland situations, he's great. But in times of stress, maybe not so yeah. much. Aren't there also um, giant fucking birds where we're going? 
There uh, are giant birds that prey on large animals. Yes. Indeed. Uh huh. Um, so, do you want to take Dominic, or do you not mind being encumbered for this mission? <clears throat> want to leave some gear behind? We could um, hire someone to be a pack mule for us. Could we Sherpa? do that? You could hire a Sherpa, absolutely. How much yeah. is a Sherpa? In this situation, you'd just be paying a day laborer to carry your shit around, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's that's like a silver a day. Oh, we're hiring a Sherpa. Uh, is, there one hiring. Named, <laughs> is there one named Dominic in the city? <laughs> For an extra yeah. silver a day, he'll let you that's call fine. him whatever you want. Yeah, All right, two yeah. silvers a day, we'll call him Dominic. Two silver a day. All right. How much gear do you have on Dominic the donkey? Do you have a um, weight for that yet? I... I have it all, um, I never got the weight, I guess, but I have it all, like, listed out. Oh, it's on your 30, sheet, okay. Yep, 30 feet of rope, three bed rolls, 50 feet of, uh, another 50. 50 feet of rope, one water skin, 21 rations, and nine torches. All right, so we're looking at, like, 80 pounds here. Yeah. Um, so... One of those, like, we could get rid of, like, the 30 feet of rope, too. Oh, well, they don't need... Sure, you'll, you can find a nice strong guy. He'll need to have 16 strength to carry this around for you. So you're looking for... A like a really big day laborer. So let's uh, double that price. Let's just call it five silver a day. So it's for easy math and accounting because that's half a gold. Um, and uh, you, you inform him what's going on. He'll just shut up and carry your stuff and walk behind you, but you got to keep him safe. And he's not fighting anything for of you, course. period. And he'll surrender rather what than, if he... you know. Oh, okay. Right. He's out. He's just. No, that's fine. Right? Yeah. You know, he's just an employee. Um, give him a Does gold up front, funny? and then we'll settle out the the bill when you get when you return. I'll pay him. He is a quiet sort of fellow. He carries your shit, and then he stands around, not saying much. He likes all right, Dominic. Seems there like you he's go. Drifting off in the world and not paying attention to what's happening. I'll uh, uh, throw our newfound Dominic the coin. Excellent. All right. Anything else that you want before you head off? Uh, and then we'll have a. We'll, what are your expectations for when you arrive? Do we need stuff to like make a fire or to be able to like set up a camp like that or to keep warm? You like, should have a someone's got a tinder box on them, right? Or a I have one, perfect. and I can also. I mean, I'm also a wizard, but uh, we yeah. we need we need warm clothes, so we need like fur cloaks for everybody for sure. sure. Yeah. Should yeah. we buy um climbing stuff just in case? I guess I don't know how much it weighs. Yeah, that's gonna be heavy, but you can buy climbing stuff, um, like a, a harness, and you probably. Don't, none of you are experienced climbers, so no pittance or no. anything like that, but like a basic harness to attach people to is probably a good idea. Uh, so why don't you... Let's How much say, is that weigh now? Uh, harnesses are a pound each and 200 copper each. Okay. Ice picks are two pounds and 400 copper. Uh, and you guys wanted like cloaks, right? Heavy cloaks for keeping warm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Must be in this other document. You said they were 400 copper, right? And two pounds oh. each for an ice pick? Yeah. I think. Alrighty. I'll just get you some cloaks and we will move forward. Are we adding cloak weight too? Or is this. Uh, well, no. Difference? It's part of your existing stuff. Uh, nice wool cloak. Yeah. So that's going to be like another 200 copper each. So two, four, six, 800 copper for the cloaks. Okay. And how many harnesses do you need? One for every person? Um, yeah. Okay, so that's going to be 16 gold okay. for ice pit, uh, I'm sorry, for harnesses and cloaks, and then you've got one ice pick, and you've got rope, and that should be enough to survive. Do you want to buy it, Gnome, and then we can give you the money later, or? Yep. I can uh, do it, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll do, I'll do it. So I'll hand them the 16 gold. 16 gold. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And then, um... So everybody had a... Oh, sorry. Everybody uh, had a back. harness and an ice pick. Um, harness one pound, ice picks two. Make sure you're not encumbered. Oh, you're, you're buying ice picks for everybody? Um, wouldn't we all need one, right? Or can like, oh, one I'm person sorry. I only give you out? price for clothes. Okay, hold on. So that means each person is buying eight gold worth of gear. So... so we need 32 gold? Yeah. Um, I'll throw up the other 16. Okay. Excellent. All right. So everyone, uh, you can just ignore the cloak. It's just on you. Uh, harness is a pound. Ice pick is two pounds, and you should all have that. Um, we'll buy one additional cloak for the pack mill guy, or does he have his own? Yes, you'll need one for him, too. Cool. That was two gold. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So a harness is one pound, you said, and an ice pick is two? Yes. 
you mean to carry anything? Um. Yeah, I'm encumbered. What do you um? Do you have a ration on you or anything? Nope. Do you have? What's your heaviest thing? That's not like armor. My ice pack. <laughs> I What's can your encumbered. Right it's fine. It's 81.2. He's very in full play. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's, um, I'll be okay. Do we have enough rations to last here for a here, while? Give okay? me the ice pick and I'll hold on to no, it. No, 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 no. I'm not going to mess around. I'm just being a card. It's fine. Do we, um, do, we need any, uh, do we need any extra rations or anything? Or are we good for a while? Um, We have 21 on the guy and I have 10 on me. So That's enough food for like, oh, yeah, three okay. or four days. How Does the like, Milexi or Lily have any? Do we eat five per day? So... I have 10. That's you have 10? Wait, you so said you we... Oh, okay, sorry. 40 total five. divided by... So that's eight days worth of food. If you have five, then that's nine days worth of food. Oh, Do you okay. think that's good? Yeah, that's um, fine. Yeah, they're small islands. Sure. Can't imagine you being out there for that. Okay. Before, um, as we're done shopping, I'm going to find um, the captain. I'll just nudge him and give him a wink and say, I've just come across an enlarged spell. If you think your date night will go well... I'm not that gnome. I thumbs up and I I wander off. All right. That Crazy. evening, after everyone is done with their shopping and everything, uh, <clears throat> bad Brad Barbo, where are you taking her? What's the place uh, called? I'm definitely taking her to the finest fish place called um, Fishes and Bits. Fishes and Bits and. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the atmosphere at Fishes and Bits. What sort uh, of place is this? Fishes and Bits is one of the nastiest taverns <laughs> in like all of the land. But it was my, it was all I could afford as a pirate. Um, so yeah. So it's like a dirty, nasty. It is like grimy. a dirty, nasty, grimy, grungy, um, shitty spot like right next to the pier. But their fish is good. Oh, but it's on the pier though. That's nice. It is on the have, pier, but it smells insanely bad. It has a view of the. I'm guessing the water is not like greatest there, but yeah. No, it's it's an ocean. It's a big open, beautiful ocean. It's got a nice There's view no of the ocean. No pollution. Um, yeah. Okay. I have gotten like um, food poisoning from fish. <laughs> <before, though. laughs> All right. And are you picking her up, or is she just meeting you here? Um, I'm gonna just meet her in the bar, and I guess I'll just take her there. It's a business meeting, okay? Yeah. We all know it's a business meeting. Uh huh. Can we just skip over this? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, we're both. Yeah, we just had a. Oh, okay. Dinner. All right, it's just a business. We meeting. just had a nice dinner. Just had a nice okay. dinner. Okay. All right. <laughs> Moving forward, it sounds like you guys have finished your dinner and you meet up with Chef. He is your sixty-five-ish year old uh, sea captain, smuggler sort of guy. Uh, you'll meet him down by the docks that evening as the sun is setting and uh, he shows you to the little sloop he's got here. Uh, he is calls he, uh, it Andy. Does he do his own shipping, sailing? Or does he have like a crew? Well, uh, you just see him by himself here, yeah. Um, where's your crew, matey? I don't need a crew, just me here. A man who does I... it all, I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I hear you're all cousins of Wyatt. Cousin of Wyatt's uh, cousin of mine. Yes. So, to the talons we go. You guys got everything you need? Yeah, um, I think we should be ready to go. I'll tell him what we have and ask him if he thinks we're missing anything for the journey. Well, I don't like to ask too many questions, but if you're going to be walking around on the islands there, you'll, you'll definitely need what you got. All right. Excellent. Uh, and you guys can hop into his sloop and head out. It is going to be a couple of days, maybe a single day on the water. A full day. And he'll have food for you guys while you're here. And, uh, well, have any of you ever been on a long ship voyage, Captain Barbo side? No. I'm Definitely going to, not. I'm going to, like, stand by the edge of the ship and vomit once every four hours. Excellent. How common uh, would it be for wealthy bit... people to like, I guess, like go on a vacation or travel to another land? Yeah, uh, you would probably have traveled by ship plenty of times. The rest of these suckers are plebs, gotcha. especially my Lixia. If you've been underground your whole life and this is your first time coming out, 
I, the last time you were in Prentice, this was probably the first time you saw the ocean ever. This is definitely your first time out on the ocean. Quite What's right. It like? Yes. Um, it's terrifying. It's a big open space, and I'm used to these very small, um, like uh, enclosed spaces that I like. So I'm going to try to find the smallest, like tightest location at the deepest part of the boat, and I'll play my bagpipes from there. Can I ask yeah. the gnome if he can, if I can take him up to the crow's nest and show him? I, I, I he'd have to roll a perception check. I'm hiding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I won't look for him too hard. <laughs> All right. Hurling. You guys. Go on, sorry. You guys journey to the talons. It's going to take you a while to get there. And as you are approaching, when the, the mountains become visible in the distance, your captain, Chef, will ask you, <clears throat> so which of these here islands do you want to go to? Should probably, is there like a main island here or are these all considered equally important? Uh, the, the fourth talon, the, the northernmost one, it's a piece of shit island. Ain't nothing on there except for man-eating beasts and trees. I'd leave it alone. The other three, well, all uninhabited except by monsters these days, and a small expedition that came out here recently, I hear. Do you know which island that one went to? I don't, unfortunately. Um, can I throw him a gold and see if it if he remembers anything? Yeah, you toss him a gold and he goes, I believe they came out on the uh, Stormbound. She was a, a good sailing ship run by a young man, inherited from his father. Uh, I'll see if I can spot the ship out here and that'll tell us where they might be. Okay. Okay. So the next day you'll sail around a little bit and he will stop when a mast comes into view near the second talon, which is the second island from the bottom. And uh, he'll clum come down from his crow's nest and tell you guys that he's spotted a ship. It's sitting, kind of just bobbing in the water off of the, the coast there. Um, I, Locke, are you cool with going there? Yeah, I mean, this seems like where everybody's at. Let's do it. Excellent. And you want, you're going to want to be going in at night, right? When yeah. uh, no one's going to see you arrive. Mm -hmm. Aye. And what size is this ship? Is this like a, a real good size ship or like a... How many it's people? A fairly, it's a, a large transport ship. So they're like on the scale of hundreds of people, right? Easily. Well, okay. possibly. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should go in quite quiet so we don't stir up a riot. Please and he's going to wait here soon. for us, right? I'll, I'll be waiting for you for up to a week. Um, uh, we'll, we'll need to discuss some sort of signal so I know how to find you. Can we just tell him to meet us back at this spot um, every day at 8 o'clock? And then he'll like, oh. go to another island and hang uh, out there? Perhaps, but if someone, a ship comes round, and I might need to, might not be available at 8 o'clock every day, depending on activities, you know? Sure. Better Captain. to set up some sort of signal that I can find and come and get you by. Look for an owl. Wait, Gerald, do I you can see pass an owl? Oh, I can I can do the owl, or I can cast a glowing illusion so that um, we reveal ourselves. A glowing illusion will be nice. Give me a, a point of land at night, and I'll sit out at the um, on the sea and, and watch it for a glowing illusion. Hopefully, don't don't send it too high. You know, uh, something flying around, glowing in the sky, is bound to attract everyone's attention. Does he have a little it rowboat that we can take? He does have a little rowboat. That's what he's gonna row you in on. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I there will be a like uh, I'll say that like on the top of a mountain point will be the illusion of a red-headed gnome, glowing gnome. Are we? Um, can I ask him? Could we? Could you stay on the ship and we'll take the rowboat and then we can just come to you at the other island? They don't look too far apart. They look looks pretty shallow water, or. Yeah, it'd be like four, uh, three to four hours of rowing to get from one island to the other. It'd be nice. Um, to whatever you want, I can, whatever. I can do. And we Captain, can hide the rowboat. I just want to make Barbo. sure I can find you. Yeah. Bar Captain Barbo, remember you could potentially become an incredible spotter because you can walk on water. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Mm. Um, I think that we should yeah. take the rowboat, so we can like make a break for it if we ever need to, and we can hide the rowboat. 
And then we won't trouble the captain with um coming back here every night for us. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. Yeah, it was my idea. Of course, it's good. Okay. Great. So you're going to take the rowboat with him, and then he'll just meet you where he drops you off in a week's time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope you don't need to leave any sooner than that. Uh, off you go. Well, wait. I would assume that he would um, be at, like, the first island, and then... I, wait, we... I thought the we negotiation would... was once he sees that he'll look for the gnome every day, and once he sees it, he'll come back. Okay, so yeah, that would also be helpful. So he's gonna look for a gnome where? Like, give um, me some specific rules here. Well, I, 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 can you describe the train to me and I'll like the the high levels, the high train, and I'll yeah, point out. Yeah. So where we've got yeah. some uh, two to three thousand foot mountains um, on each of these islands, and then other than that, it's sort of flattish. Uh, rocky terrain with a lot of trees. Uh, he'll hills. just he'll just look for the gnome on the beach that we came in on, and I'll play a. It'll be like a big glowing gnome, and maybe he'll even make a sound. Okay. Well, he'll be too far out to hear anything, but he'll he'll look for a glowing gnome on the beach that you guys land. Okay, and then I can the, also the fly the. I can also fly the owl to him too. Right. And uh, as yeah. long as he's within 120 feet, yeah. True. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So he's gonna drop you off tonight on this beach right over here at the back side of the mountain um, because the, the ship is sitting sort of over here and he wants to avoid being spotted by the ship. So that night he brings you over and up and drops you off on a, a section of coastline with the rowboat here. And you're gonna tuck the rowboat away underneath some brush or something and then venture throughout the rest of the island looking for something, yeah? Yeah, can, can we hide it, like, really well? Sure. Yes. And let me just make some checks for our dearly beloved Captain Chef here. Oh, his reception is so good. Um, as you're actually coming in to, to make landfall, he'll tell you that he spotted a, a small campfire on the northwestern uh, shore of the island. How small? Does it look like personal. a one-person camp? Personal? Uh, you know, like, small group of people. Yeah. You guys get set off onto the icy, snowy coastline here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go up to Locke and... Uh, Locke, you would be more... Uh, you would use this more than I would. And I'm going to hand him my um, ring that will allow him to walk on water. Because uh, if you go into water, you will immediately sink to the bottom. So. Okay. Thank you. Water. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm going to give him a... I'm going to go for a handshake. Uh, I shake his hand. Thank you. Um, is this a one? What, what would I? How would I label this? I ring didn't have of it water as a walking. ring yeah. of water walking. One pound or what? No, negligible weight. Don't okay. worry about it. Gotcha. We should scout ahead and be silent so that we prevent any situation violent. Yeah. Do we see? Um. So we're like we're at the same island now as the boat, right? The larger ship we saw. Mm -hmm. Do we see like um, any evidence of, of is that like in view of us right now? Can we see that ship? Uh, let me s measure some distances. Yeah, you can. Well, he dropped you off at night, yeah. so that no one would spot you it's coming. Hard to so see. you would have been able to see it while you were coming in. But once the sun is down, it's uh, there might be light on the portholes. Yeah, there's probably some lights on the ship that allow you to see it at nighttime. Definitely. Okay, block. I could go. Um, I go scout it out. Yeah, we should definitely see what they're up Very to, see smart. where they're headed to and where they're coming back from. All right. Captain Bad Brad Barbo, you're going to run ahead of the rest of the party and yeah. take a look at this thing, right? Yep. Excellent. So you're coming up along the, the coastline here, and the section he dropped you off on, unbeknownst to him, is um, kind of a bit of a peninsula, and there's a, a small, narrow gap that crosses over to the rest of the island at a certain point. And as you're coming by the light of the moon, you can spot a pack of kobolds on the other side of this uh, narrow stretch. They're actually not all like that. They're more or less sitting around together, looking at each other, chattering amongst themselves. Do they have like a fire? Are they like hanging out or are they just- There's no fire. They're just standing- Do kobolds, do they, um, are they nocturnal? Yeah, they are dog-like creatures. So they're maybe three, three and a half feet tall. 
a canine sort of features, a little bit of fur that covers them. They're not too smart. In fact, they're some of the dumbest humanoids you'll ever find. Uh, but they're vicious in large numbers because uh, they'll just they'll just mob and swarm. My kingdom for fireball. <laughs> how far away am I from the kobolds right now? Or sorry, how far away am I from my party? We're on the map, you see us, right? We're right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I... Am I able to give him like a hand signal, like that? There's sure. like, danger up ahead. Yeah, I'll do yeah. that. Are we assuming is, when you say it's night out? Are, do we have like moonlight? Is it somewhat visible, or is it like pitch black? Or we what? do have moonlight. Yes. Okay. It, it, do we have to pass by these guys to get to where we're going? It looks like it. Yeah, there's this narrow yeah. little connector from the peninsula that you were on to the rest of the island. Mm -hmm. It's only about I don't know four or five feet wide, seven at the most to cross. If we wanted to make this fight a clean sweep, we should open with magical sleep. Yeah, just sleep them all. And then can I touch them all? Uh, I don't Do know we if care I about kobolds or yeah. are well, kobolds like sentient? We, we, yeah, no, we can They're... we can dispatch this entire group with these. We don't need to waste any of our magic spells here. Um, are you sure? Do yeah, you yeah, I'm definitely sure. They're little baby boy kobolds. You guys would know that kobolds are pretty chumpy. You know, they've got like maybe 10 HP at the very, very most. More likely they've got three or four. Yeah. They Kobolds. have like plus two to hit. They're, they're shitty creatures. They don't generally wield bows, do they? Or do these? They can use slings or spears. Uh, you don't see... Captain Barbo, make me a perception check, actually. Maybe you can spot something on them by the moonlight. I didn't. So. Oh, this 10, 13? Yeah. You can't see if they have if they have slings on them, but they definitely have spears. Uh, I, mateys, we don't need to be afraid of kobolds. Um, we could have Locke stand in front with the plate mail and that they'll, they'll never hit him. What's yeah. your AC, Locke? 18. 18. Let's do it. Okay, I'm 17. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay. would kobolds, yeah, no, it was... So Locke starts approaching the little bridge, and the kobolds notice. They perk their heads up when they see this. What, what color is your armor, Locke? Um, you tell me. It came from the uh, from the lady. Um, make it blue. Yeah, yeah I, if I can like, make it blue. Whatever you wanted. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, then yeah, I want it to be a very... Light blue? I want it to be a very aggressive blue. Like Royal blue. blue. Um, yeah, okay. An aggressive blue color. Yeah. All right, they saw they spot this knight in blue armor walking across the icy bridge towards them, and they oh. hedge towards you a little bit. Can I can I do something before actions? Um, mm -hmm. I want to create a um, silent image um, slash like use my gnome illusion category um, to cantrip that the bridge looks like more narrow w w ahead of Locke than um, like it looks like just air instead of like um, ice. How do you make something look like air without making it invisible? Mm, you should be able to, you, you should be able to like, just make it look like the, uh, like, like the, water the or something. yeah. Cause you can't remove things with an illusion spell. You can put something over it or around it, but you can't like make something vanish from sight. Okay, that you makes make sense. It just look yeah. like broken rock then, if you wanted to. Could I yeah. attempt to throw a dagger at one of them? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'll just toss they're, a dagger. They're kind of far. I think your dagger range is forty Actually, feet. Actually, so to get closer. Okay. Then you know what I want to do? Um, I want to make it look wider than it actually is. Um, You're where, yeah, so so like along um, along this line, um, I want like this to be wider than it is. Maybe on hopes that some kobolds will run over it and actually fall. Okay, uh, your party members won't be able to tell where the real bridge stops and starts either, right? Only you will know the truth. Is that right? Can, um... Yeah, because it affects everyone. Okay, I'm just gonna tell everybody to not move ahead. Like we just stay our course. Yeah, like it'll be like right here. I'll tell everybody where it is though. So I'm just going to draw an extra bridge. Oh, that's not... We... Yeah, Locke, can you move up too? Cool. So there's an extra phantasmal section of bridge here that appears pretty much out of nowhere. 
as spooks the kobolds, they, they all move back in a huff as they see the land sort of move and shift and grow. Am I able to see if I can toss right now? Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, go ahead and throw your dagger from that range. Oh my god. 23 is a hit. You hit the first kobold and it dies on the end of your dagger, and that is when they charge en masse on lock. So let's roll initiative. Wow, what an initiative they just rolled. Truly astounding. Okay. Descending Captain Barbo, you're the first one. You've already hit and killed one of these cowardly kobolds. I'll throw another dagger, my last dagger I had two. Give me a roll to hit. Oh, another perfect shot. Tell me which kobold you're striking. Um, top or bottom right. That one. All right, you hit him for six, and he does not die. Um, and that very next kobold comes to the middle of this path, takes his spear, and just hurls it at Bad Brad Barbo. Uh, why does this say dagger? He should have spears, not daggers. This is an error. So he hurls hit. his spear at you for... Three damage? No, that's still oh, dagger, it's dagger damage. That's an old token that I reused without double checking its specs. Dagger's 1d6, okay. Does 1d6 plus two. He does eight to you with the, da with the Jesus. spear. Jesus. The most damage a kobold will ever do. Lock, <laughs> it's your turn. Um... All right, I'll walk forward and I will take a poke at this guy right in front of me. Give me a roll to hit. Um, actually, I'm going to um, I'm going to swing my my bonus action, the back end of my thing. Fourteen. Fourteen's enough. So, so seven damage. Yeah, you bludgeon the kobold in the side of the head. His body goes flying, hits the the icy wall nearby, and comes to a rest as he dies. I'm gonna step a little bit more forward, and then on wh whichever kobold is in range, it could be the one right in front of me. I'm gonna take my normal attack action. Mm -hmm. Six damage. You will strike and drop another one. All right, and then I'll back up slightly back here. All right. Let me make sure that you are still indeed. Yep, you're still on the land. Fantastic. Uh, Midori, it's your turn. Um, I'm going to chill touch two of them. Left. Yep. Like these two. Okay. Thirteen will hit. Is it same roll for both each target? I'm not sure. I forgot. The spell can instead target two creatures within range. Does that mean it's just? Did yeah, I, roll I think for it just two uses next time. Last time we rolled twice though. Roll twice then. Okay. Let's just keep it consistent. Uh -oh. All right, you'll hit the first one for eight, killing it. And the second one for one, badly wound, well, mildly wounding it. Not even badly. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All six kobolds are going to just hurl their spears at Locke and then run away. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Does a 19 hit you? Yep, and the 21. So 14 right, damage. So you take 14 damage and the whole pack of kobolds runs. Break, they just break and flee into the uh, into the island somewhere. Uh, next up would be Gerald. They're um, they're all here. gone, right? Uh, there are two still that haven't left yet, but they're definitely going to be following suit. Where just where are the two right the now? Um, I will um, I will cast a uh, toll the dead on one of them. Yeah, I will. That's a saving yeah. throw for the kobold? Yeah, wisdom. Yeah, he definitely doesn't make it. And he'll take four points of damage. Uh, kobold range. Nope, these two are both just going to throw their spears at Locke as well. Uh, one of them will hit you for three, and they will flee. So we come back around to Barbo. 
Now you're faster than these guys. If you want, you could catch up to them and hack them to bits. Yeah. Um, am I able to like run up to him and like do a double attack then? 50. You'll probably take two rounds of running to catch up to them. They're, they're Cunning slower, action. Not slow. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns. Use dash, disengage, or hide action. There you go. Yep, yeah. you can definitely catch them. Cool. I'm going to run up and um, attack both of these two. Go I'll attack it. the one on the left with my second hand. Excellent. And then the main one on the right. Uh, the one on the left gets hit and dies. The one on the right... So, I have a question. Now that running he's... Running from you... So, I'm going to give you advantage on that attack roll because he's oh, okay. in a dead out run like in a panic yeah he's not, i was gonna ask for sneak him. attack too um so now that the one near him's dead and i don't think he's within five feet of anybody else would i get sneak attack for it since the guy would been... okay just, just out of curiosity no yeah yeah, would, yeah yeah just for next time right. yep he goes down lock are you gonna join in the slaughter yeah are they is the distance these guys are accurate right now or is it much farther uh it's a little bit farther they've moved 25 feet so they are um, actually, they're just a little bit farther. Is my max move 50 feet while I'm encumbered? Yes. That's with no attacks at the end of it. Gotcha. So then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll move my full move. Would, would On the map, it would put me, like, up here. I don't know how far that is from them, actually, but... That's in and amongst them, totally. Okay. Um, yeah. wait, so they are actually right here right now, right? That is right there right now. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I think I was standing back here. I'm not. I don't think I'm close enough to take an attack, but I can um, go here so that yeah. these two, I think, are within my threat range. Yes. Okay. And then when they move on their turn, they'll provoke an attack, and you'll get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Midori, death is all around you. Five of the native people of this island have already been cut down. Maybe six. I've already lost track. It's your turn. Wait. Oh, she's not here. Uh, she went oh, to the bathroom. Oh, I'm just talking to myself Same. then. Uh, oh. She follows. Cool. And the kobolds flee. Go ahead and get your one attack of opportunity lock. Your one reaction. 14. That'll hit. And, we'll, oh, 11 will kill. Yes, you drop another one. If you, uh, um, if you do, like, a double move, that double move costs your action, right? Yes. Does it cost a bonus action? No. Oh, okay. So if I were to double move in the future, I can take my bonus action Polar Master attack, right? No, you can only make that action when you use the attack action instead of the dash action. I believe. Okay. Well, so earlier, because earlier I used my bonus action first to use that Polar Master. But you were going to use the Polar Master anyway. The rest uh, of the Yeah, you're, okay. Anyway. So then I'll, I'll just read this in just so we're clear. When you take the attack action and attack with only a glaive, halberd, or quarterstaff, you can use a bonus action to make a melee attack with the opposite end of the weapon. So technically, I probably shouldn't be able to do that bonus action first then, right? I mean, as long as you are going to spend the action on it, that's fine. If you bonus action first and kill the creature, you can't then move afterwards. But you can okay. go ahead and take him in any order. Okay, okay, that I'm in. Gotcha. The remaining kobolds continue to flee. Uh, if you want to keep hunting them down, Barbo, you're the next... No, I'm sorry, Gerald is the next one up. We didn't get to do Midori's because she was in the bathroom? Yeah, I think she just moved. She... Oh, okay. She just had to move. Yeah, they would have been out of sight anyway. Yep. Um, so I can see the two? Yeah. I, I would say, um, beware that they may be running us into a trap that we should not fall for, lest we saps. Yeah, um, leave the dogs alone. Just let them go. I, I'll, I'll still cast it one before I leave. Um, I will cast um, Toll the Dead on the one to the to the right of Locke. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will roll him a save. Natural 20, modified 18. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds good. He yeah. survives and flees. All right. Yeah. The kobolds generally <laughs> escape the party. My uh, luck. Some of them. Okay. Two. All right. You guys continue heading north, making your way by the moonlight. Barbo, give me a stealth check for when you, whatever you're, however you're stealthing when you approach the out camp. Ooh, that's a great stealth check. Opposed by their perception. Excellent. After an hour or so of skidding along the coast, you spot lights up ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks to be like campfires lights. You can also see the ship bobbing out and seeing. 
from the vantage point that you have, you can see that there's not much of a settlement here. Uh, it looks like it's just a, a small fire in some rocks with a few people standing around it. It doesn't look like the Does it, camp, but it looks like a camp. Does it look like these are the people just pretty much stationed to guard the boat? And then the bigger, um, I would guess like more people are somewhere else on the island? Probably something guess. along those lines, yeah. How many people do I see down there? We're, give me another perception check. Can you spot two? Okay. Can I have the, the, the owl summon nearby? Um, yes. Thank you. I'm gonna like show my party, like just say like two people, like with hand signals or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll go back to them stealthily and ask them what we wanna do. And I'll convey that I think that there's, um, well, when I look around, can I see like, does it look like there's a larger fleet um, somewhere else? Like, are there, um, well, you know there's a whole bunch of people out here, but you've only yeah. spotted two, and it's a small, shitty fire, and there's no, like, walls or buildings or supply wagons okay. or anything like that. So it's definitely not the main camp for, for realsies. Yeah, I'll explain that, that there's probably only two people here guarding the boat, and then the main cap camp is somewhere else. Okay. Um, I mean, we should try to ascertain where they're headed inside this place. I mean, whatever they're after is probably important, so we need to figure out where the main we party should. is. We could capture one and um, make them talk. Well, wouldn't it be better to just search? I mean, there's got to be a massive party. This island can't be too large. You should be able to figure out where they're headed. Sure. Shouldn't we um, capture the boat since they have no course of leaving, I guess? What would the four of us do capturing a boat? Where do we go from there? Um, we just handle these people so they can't like go and bring back reinforcements or something. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, um, so just... If you... That's fine. Speaking reasonably, there's no way there's only two people here guarding this boat. There must be other people on, on board. I, I doubt they would empty the entire ship. Uh, sure. And what are we going to do if we commandeer a ship, right? We could sail into the sea and we'll get, you know, destroyed enough. Would it? I'm, um, yeah, I'm cool with going and find the, um, finding the other camp. I think Maybe we should, we should take a rest? Um, but why not ask and kill these people? Like, why not just, like, take, there's only two of them there. Why don't we just capture them, ask what they're doing, and then kill them? I only saw two. I couldn't see into the ship. Um, so there could be a lot more potentially on the ship. But you can do it quietly, right? Or I can sleep them, we can drag them back. Um, I don't know how good it's going to look if we're randomly, if people begin to die on their ship. I don't know if you want to alert anybody to our presence here. Mm. I think that Locke and I need a rest. Um, and then we can pick it up in the morning. Maybe with more daylight, we can come back and look. Well, let's, I think we should try and find out where they're going right now. Let's just see what they're investigating here. We don't have to attack anybody or fight anybody. Does it look like they're investigating anything? I think they're camped out. They're just it's hanging out. They're just standing over the fire, warming their hands. Well, but like, should we, shouldn't we be able to find tracks or see like a direction that like a main party would have went? If you get closer to the camp, I've sort of alerted you to their presence at your maximum viewing range, yeah. though. Mm -hmm. That you, if you want to get closer, you could probably find out this information. Is there anything my owl can see with with vision? If you give me the owl, I can stealth and get in, probably. Yeah, owls have great vision. They're night hunters. Uh, from your owl's position, you're gonna have to get to 120 feet of these guards to get the owl like directly overhead them, of uh, them. So, let me actually give you a, a small map of the area so we at least know what we're working with here. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just put down a campfire for us. So you've got two guards uh, warming their hands by the fire. The ocean is to the bottom of the screen. We could just uh, talk to them. What, they, if we let anyone else to our presence on this island, then they'll kill us for sure. What, um, what are they wearing? Are they wearing anything that would be noticeable, like Tavington stuff? Uh, most of their gear is hidden by the big heavy cloaks that they're wearing to keep themselves warm. You can see that their shields are leaned up against this rock right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and their weapons are just stuck down in the snow, so they're sticking up right next to their hands. But no, no identifying marks. No, there's no banners, and the cloaks aren't matching the rest of their uniforms, so okay. all that information's hidden. Would places usually have banners? Or no? 
uh, probably not a small detachment like this, but their their normal clothing might have some sort of symbol if they're serving a specific lord or with a specific mm. unit. Um, I asked the gnome if he's. Do you see anything with the uh, with the owl? Um, I I, I relay the information. Just shake my head. Like, um, there, Did there's you see no a road or anything like that. They're like a bunch of people would have taken like any tracks or anything like that. Hmm. Um, do, I, did I see anything like that? Uh, can you ask the question again? Any roads or any kind of th- any kind of way that my owl would spot any kind of tracks or anything? Something that um. So mm-hmm. while you're standing and chatting about this, one another guard shows up from around a rock and joins them at the fireplace. Sticks a spear in the snow and hangs out. You can see that there are many tracks uh, that kind of come and follow this this bit of a trail here that we have on screen. You okay, so we would have to go past these guards to get to that trail? Uh, you're on this... Yeah, you're down here on this low part. Okay. So you would have to get past them or climb up the, the cliff without alerting them. Mm-hmm. Or would it be really hard to climb up that cliff without alerting them? Um, it would we have, be like, ice picks and stuff. You can climb it for surezies to make sure you don't alert them. Everyone in the game would have to just make a successful DC 10 climbing check. What if I do... Um... Oh, DC can I, 15, actually. Because would one person, sorry, would one person be able to do the climbing, and then we could pull everybody up, else up with a rope and not have to do the check again? Uh, I would give them advantage on their second check, on their checks. Okay. Because um, you know you might still pull a rock loose or knock some snow off sure. or kick something. Can we just kill them all? <laughs> no, that's not what we're here for. Locke, do you wanna, do you wanna climb up and then? Um, yeah, we can pull each other up. What is the? Roll is it cur- like um, it is an dex? acrobatics or athletics check. The DC is fifteen to do it without making any noise. <sighs> to climb it successfully, no, really no, just to climb it without making without, noise. Yeah, without making noise. And okay. then we have advantage checks after the first person. And then if you lower down a rope, everyone's got advantage yeah. on their climb checks. But What's what if your? Pass these checks. They'll hear something. Then we should kill them. We don't have to kill Majority. them. There are ways we can I'm deal not... with them without ending their lives. I don't really want to kill people right now, Midori, okay? Okay, but if it comes down to it, we have to kill them. If it comes down to it, I will give you all of their heads. Okay, fine. Uh, Locke, what's your, I guess, um, athletics? I'm pretty athletic. My, like six? Uh, it's five. I have six, so I'll go first. Okay, yeah, go for it. You scramble on up, and as you're getting to the top and you, you grab hold of a, a rock, you pull yourself most of the way and the ice holding that section in place breaks and the rock goes tumbling down and you get up onto the top side but not before the rock tumbles and clatters and those of you that are spying on the guards see them kind of alert and look in your direction one of them had says to the others i'll take a look and heads out towards you guys now you guys are just barely off screen right here and there is a, a single guard coming towards you in the night can I like point to the gnome? And, um, like... I, I'm gonna I'm gonna create an illusion um, that makes like a sound of like just like a bird fluttering. Like I'll I'll make the it'll just be like a bird fluttering. Actually, like a, a night bird fluttering away from that location, and, and just like a sound of it, just like like that. What's a night bird? The night bird is actually an owl. It's a snow owl. <laughs> it's a specific okay. Owls yeah. notably don't make noise when they fly. Um, it's not making a noise when it flies. It's making a noise when it like like takes off, and that's like like I, I'm like trying to make it so the guard would connect the right. Um, I mean, call, you're, okay, you're we picking call an it. animal that's noted for its stealth and quiet. How Pick about like a deer. how Do about like, a deer. like that's deer too big? I can't. Island? A snow how about, bunny? Yeah, how about like a snow bunny, like a snow rabbit? Yeah, sure. So you the guard yeah. comes around, and there's like a little rabbit that kind of like is hopping out, and the guard smiles and. Takes aim with his spear. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's gonna throw his spear at your bunny. His dinner that did not throw. Let's try this uh, again. He, he misses. <laughs> yeah, he misses. Uh, throw. Oh my god! Double natural one. It goes wide. In Ooh. fact, it almost hits you. It just like woo, way overshoots and lands nearby you somewhere. Uh, the guard gives it a wave, leaves the spear, and heads back to the rest of his group, saying. Fucking rabbit. I need another spear. They argue about why he didn't pick it up, and, you know, they, they talk as they do. 
All right, I'll, so um, we're getting a rope tossed down to us now? Yep, I'll lower yep. down the rope. I'll Excellent. kind of like tie it around a rock um, really well and then lower it down for them to... And then do we still need to make 15s in order to be quiet about this? 15s at uh, advantage or...? Let's do 15s at advantage to make it quietly. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, it's still gonna be a little bit tough. You're trying to be dead silent in a, a snowy, still environment. Now that we have two people up here, could we just straight up like pull them up, like him, Locke and I, and then make it like ultra silent? Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, the DC will be 10 if the two of you are pulling them up. Cool. Okay. Because you still have to kind of push off the wall. Go for it, other people. Let's go. Uh, so this is an athletics check? Or acrobatics, your choice. Uh, hold on. Um... Okay. Woo! You it's make good. it. And Midori, you make it too. All right, the whole party's up on the cliffside silently. The guards will never be any wiser. Damn it. Move along. Do we, um, what about our pack meal guy? Do we care about this guy? Or oh, right, right. Is he just like an etherally him. floating behind us? No, he's there. <laughs> he's there. Uh, he's got 16 strength and he's trained in athletics, so he has a. So he's got a plus five to his athletics check. So our 1d20 plus five. Oh, he makes it handedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silently, he follows behind you. Uh, welcome up, Dominic. Uh, <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Now we're going to head in the direction of the path so we can try to see if we can yeah. spot where the soldiers yeah. are going. Yeah. I'm going to be in front. Can I have the owl assist me, I guess? Yeah, of sure. course. Mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes later, you find the trail. It looks very well tread. The snow is maybe a foot and a half deeper where the trail is. It's all matted down by the weight of these people. And you can follow it very easily. Clear as day. Go follow it. Um, I don't want to follow on the trail, obviously, but. I, I just want the owl to be like a little bit ahead, like watching um, as we travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You make your way across the center of the island tonight. You pass through a forest that the trail just cuts right along. Do you have any concerns or fears or worries as you enter into this uh, thick, dark wood where you basically lose all light? You're, what time is you it right now? You just feel your way uh, well after dark. There are no watches or clocks, so. Um, does Midori, do you have your light thing yeah do we want to do that because it will pretty much alert people to our uh presence i have night vision Ooh, that's midori can lead you if you form a train behind her with her infravision and gerald's infravision you should be able to walk no yeah. problem yeah mine's a, my vision's can insane my hand. can i put like gerald on my shoulders and him like kind of like lead me yeah that'll right. work perfect yeah. okay yeah. You guys press through the forest. It's quiet the whole time. The only noises are when you move your hand to scratch your nose or try and warm up your ears. After a few hours, you make it out the other side of the woods and see down the, the slope of the trail that goes down a hill, a small camp at the edge of a cliff that would drop into the ocean, uh, backed against a mountain. You can see there's just a, a single f light down there and about eight people standing around it, keeping an alert eye out. These look like guards. Am I uh, able to see the map? The map? The map? Uh, like the... Oh, like can you show us like the layout on yeah, our screen or whatever? Yeah, the mm, I don't have a map built for this one, but I can do a doodle. Let's do a basic doodle. Uh, okay, so something like this area north of this white line is water. It's going to be the ocean. Cool. And then there is a mountain edge over here. Something like that. I'll make you gray so we can see what's going up. And I'll make you blue. And then your trail that you're following is coming sort of this direction, which you'll see in just a moment. 
So you're coming along this trail towards the, the camp, which is situated like right around here. Like in the middle uh, of the impasse, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and there is a fire in the middle. Um, and they're hard on alert, right? Yep, all eight of them are standing about quite attentive. Are we able to see um, past, I guess, like the guards currently and see if they're yeah. like, can we, can we see anybody like back here? Yeah, yeah, you move off the trail quietly, carefully, silently, uh, and you don't see anything past here, but you do see there are carvings in the rock itself, like handles, uh, like steps, as if there's something up the mountainside. Should we sleep them? There's eight of them, it's a lot. Then let me touch them. Oh, true. We can sleep some. I could create a noise that um, gets them to run away or gets them to check something out while we sneak by. Like I don't on the think other we're side. We're going to be able to get all eight of them to investigate a noise. We got to get yeah, rid of them. I don't think we can sleep by this one. Or still no by. choice. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I could. I mean, I could open with sleep and then get quite a bit of them, maybe half. Um. When we're, when we're looking at these guards, are, do we see, like, are these, like, real big burly guards, or are these kind of, like, normal? These are your everyday, regular folk. And there's not, like, a mage with them or anything, right? We would be able to tell pretty easily. We could, um... No one that's dressed like a mage. They okay. all look more or less the same. Okay. Would there be enough snow that, um, on top of that mountain kind of thing, that, like, if it were disturbed, like, the snow would fall on them? Is there anything like that? Possibly. Uh, this is just like a, a sheer cliffside, so there's snow tucked against it, and then up at the top of it, when it stops being sheer and starts being slanted, there would be snow there too. That's a maybe 80 feet up. If you could find a way to make that fall, it could definitely rain down on them. Why did that kill them? Oh, are you concerned about that now, Midori? Oh, I mean, Why? Well, are you switching gods that? again, Midori? <laughs> No, she's here to kill people. What do you mean? That would be consistent. I could, that. um, I could maybe firebolt, um, the top enough that I would create like a, like a an avalanche type of thing and get all the all the snow to fall on them, and then we could just rush by, while they're fucked. I don't know. As How would we be able to run? Or oh, sorry, go ahead. As you're watching this situation and getting better vantage points and discussing what's happening, you see a hulking knight uh, climb down the mountainside. It's got plate mail on, and uh, tucked, kind of like hanging off its shoulder, is a, a two-handed axe. When it gets down to the base floor, it picks the axe up, walks over to the other guards, who give it a very solemn nod, and produce from around the bend a little bit a prisoner, uh, a soldier. Do they we see force the soldier colors, to its... colors, banners, yeah, it anything? Looks all the same like the rest of these, dressed... Uh, like the rest of them. The, the big hulking knight mm -hmm. has the banner of Major Tavington, Captain Tavington on it. Mm -hmm. Wait, is he Captain or Colonel Tavington? Oh, he's a Colonel, uh, right? Colonel. Yeah. He's a Colonel, Colonel, definitely. Yeah, he went Captain Major Colonel. <clears throat> uh, this knight walks over to the person who's been forced onto his knees and his head is put forward and bowed. She lifts her giant two-handed axe and brings it down on the person for 12 damage, severing its head from its shoulders. Uh, and then the knight picks up the body, tosses it off the cliff into the water below, and leaves the head where it was, and then returns to climb up the mountain again. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should magic missile the, um, the, the mountainside guys and then get them get the avalanche to drop down on it i uh, drop down on them yeah it's just kind of a gamble i, I mean uh, unless you know specifically how avalanches work do we really think it's reliable you, that you can cause an avalanche to happen no um but i can get them with a magical sleep if you prefer that how close together are these people could you could we reasonably hit all with, with one magical sleep i actually have There's... a better spell but it's a big one they're standing close to the fire, so they are clumped heavily. What are their spell do you have? Uh, it's called Cloud of Daggers. <laughs> it could it could potentially kill them all in one shot. Um, it's but it's a five by five square though. You're only hitting one person at a time. Maybe two if they're. No, clumped. it's a, you said they're clumped together, and it's a, it's an a um it's a total it's, AOE, right? I thought it. So, yeah, it's an AOE, but I thought it was a five by five AOE. Am I wrong? Five foot cube. 
Yeah, five feet on a side. Oh, that so was. five foot by five foot by five foot. Yeah, it's really great if they have to come through an area. Terrible in an open territory. This is like yeah. if two people are standing next to each other, you could hit both, right? Yeah. yeah, it's not worth it. And not for level two. Every encounter needs fireball, but we don't have it yet. Ugh, okay, fireball Thank is just dead. I mean, if these are normal guards, you could sleep them and we could move up to fight them, but I don't think we're... I'm not in a position right now to deal with that large knight that we saw earlier. Oh, uh, yeah. Like an absolute monster. Yeah. Should we take the knight and then see if we get a See what's happening tomorrow? in the morning? They might be done with whatever they're doing. I mean, they've been working here for how many days? I thought they're going to finish in a single night. Okay, well, let's go, um... Up. Let's go rest up. We'll come back and then kill them all. Are we, do we have a place around here where we could rest, like, well off the path, but kind of be okay, or...? Let's take a look at the world map. Bring us down to a focused view of the islands. So, there's really just the forest in the middle, and then the sort of rocky, snowy terrain around it, which is has some cover on it, and then cliff sides around most of the island. And most they're, like, right, like a, they're yeah. right in that corner. That's the spot. Are we able to go back in that forest? You could head back into the forest. Um, the one thing is, with the snow everywhere, any trail you make is going to be visible to everybody. One last Packing thing. people is like a guaranteed thing here. If we want to take that fight, I could probably web them, and um, they'd all be hosed. That's a really good spell for this. Now you I'm guys are on the island for a week, so you're not going to be able to get new spells or reinforcements or really rest mm -hmm. up, since it's such a small place. I just want you to be aware that you could you could run out of resources. Yeah. Um, but do as you please. Um, I think it'd be wise to rest one night and then see what's up tomorrow. We lose our stealth advantage. Yeah, but it looks like they're guarding stuff. Doesn't look like they're going to be coming out looking for us. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no one should know we're on this island yet. We could also make fake trails and stuff. We're really paranoid about it. All right, let's go. Um, let's go take a night. How far right. off of the path would we have to? If I if I wear this ring, do I make paths in the snow? How how you much too. into chemistry are we doing this? Really? Even though it's water, shouldn't I be technically floating on top of it? What you're saying has a certain level of uh, sense to it. Okay. You could also just walk on the water. <laughs> what, what question mark? Um, <laughs> but, but that's it's still it's water. The, yeah, it's the, the. I understand what you're saying. Um, it's not a chemistry class. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So do we? We want to find a place where we can just take a short rest just for the night. Yeah. Okay. You guys head into the woods and head off the trail to a spot somewhere, hoping that if anyone comes across it in the night, right. they'll think it's a game trail or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, wait, that's not good. That's not a good solution. I mean, you could set alarms or something, right? Yeah, I'm going to. Um, but then we're just in a really bad position because we we lose the advantage of surprise. They they surprise us now at this point. Um, yeah, but I think Locke and I are officially low HP that we'd risk it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing about half my hit points. That's my only worry. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with fighting with too low health. You might be doing it anyway if they surprise us and you have- Can we just hide in a tree or something? Yeah. Like, sleep in a you tree? You can't sleep comfortably in a tree, not enough to recover hit dice. I respect. <laughs> um, would there be like a, um, would there be like a cave that we see? Wait, what? I have an insane nature check, uh, so I can probably use my nature check to, um, try to cover the tracks, right? Maybe. What if, what if we just slept in a cave? How long does that illusion spell last? That's not, it's it's only ten minutes. It's not good. Okay. How long does the alarm or alert spell last? That lasts forever. Okay. What if we slept in a cave, cast an alert spell outside the cave, but then like inside of the cave, if the alert goes off, you just create a minor illusion wall in front of us that makes it look like they're at the end of the cave. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, we could just do that so that if they come in looking for anything, it just looks like an empty cave, and then we'd be behind the illus illusory wall. Okay. Yeah, right, let's you guys find an empty cave. Look for an empty cave. So, on this trail, without making any marks, um, you can basically head back to where you landed or that first part, the other side of the island, and look for a cave there. 
otherwise you'd be deviating from the trail and creating a path. Is that, are you comfortable creating a path or you wanna head I back wanna further do- away? If we create a path, I wanna cover it with my nature check for sure. Okay. I'm mm-hmm. comfortable with creating a path. All right. Yeah, uh, very, very quickly, you guys can spot a cave. Just sending your owl out, you find a whole bunch of small caves nestled into the mountain here. It looks like the whole thing is riddled with them. Um, you head off the trail. Gerald does his best to cover the tracks, and you find yourself at the mouth of a long abandoned mine. There are still some brass tracks that run into it, although they don't go very far. It looks like the rest of the tracks have been pulled up somewhere else. Uh, ones here are left. And you can make yourselves at home. It's cozy, if a little cold and echoey. And... Uh, I just want to make sure that there's um, uh, ritual alarms in the entrance and uh, behind us if, if, the, if the cave is deeper, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You find a cozy spot to settle down for the night. Okay. And while you settle down for the night, why don't we take a sh- short break? And when we come back, we will continue. Sure. Wait, do we want to roll dice or do we do that when we come back? Let's roll dice when we come back. Okay. It means he has um, to set stuff up, Jealous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A giant spider again <laughs> in the crevice. All right, I'm going to throw the Be Right Back screen on them. Cool. Excellent.
Can I welcome us back? Wow, everybody. Welcome back to Gnomes, Tomes, and Catacombs. Hello, everybody. Like the way he says it. Hello, everyone. Like that? That's how you yeah, think I, Neil sounds? That's, yeah. That's insulting. Okay. Wow. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Has Hag at the back All for this right, campaign? All right, everybody. So you're here in this cave. What are you doing to keep track of everything? Are we going to get sued by Mickey Mouse? Or? <laughs> All right. Um... What do you mean, keep track of everything, I guess? I was just talking to, to voice. Oh. Yeah. All right, you are settling down in this cave. You're exhausted. It's been a, a full day of, like, rowing and sailing and then uh, a long night of trudging through the snow and trying to avoid detection, and you're not used to the cold, and it's irritating. And as you're finally settling down uh, in your cave, we have a few issues to work out. Like, what are you using for warmth here. Are you going to make like a, a little fire in the cave to keep you warm or are you just going to freeze your balls off? Your body warm. Hello? I would be down to cuddle with body warm. <laughs> do we, um, um, did we bring camping supplies? Like tinder or anything like that? Or do we have mm -hmm. tinder? Do we have wood? You could head outside. This is very near to the forest. We're almost for sure not making a fire though for obvious reasons, right? Inside the cave? Sure. Well, just anywhere, because we don't want people to see. Well, how deep is it? Could would, would the light reasonably echo out? The cave is pretty deep and tangly and webbed. You could probably head quite far in without and not be seen. We're not worried about the light. We're worried about the smoke, though. Leave you to the cave. Are we able to just do like two people to a bedroll and then stay warm that way? You could snuggle. Yeah. I'm uh, sleeping. I'm gonna sleep with Locke. I'll sleep. I told you. You always get the gnome in the end, Steven. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Locke and Barbo should see black screens because it's pitch black in here and you guys have no infravision or light source. Midori and Gerald should be able to see around the cave at least a little bit. I'll stay with Midori since I can't see a thing. Oh, yeah, you can, you can stick by me. I'll, I'll, I'll leave. Excellent. As you guys drift off to sleep, I want everybody to make me a perception check. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. He uh, drew the cave. Mm -hmm. All right, Midori. This one is on you. You. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait. We're, this is before we go to sleep, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. I would use my second win before sleeping. Excellent. Um, and also, Gerald, you set alarms, right? In front and back. I, I did. I, yeah, absolutely. Did you set them on the ceiling where the giant spider is? No, I didn't okay. set them on the ceiling where the giant spider is. <laughs> okay, good, because there's no giant spider. Yeah. <laughs> You're Why isn't there a giant spider? I want the adult black dragon. Oh yeah. What if it's a snow spider? It has fur. It could be an ice spider, but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna change it up here. It's not. All right. Um, Midori, you're alerted and awoken before the alarm spells even go off because you can hear this like heavy breathing coming from deeper in the cave. Like it's slow, Barbo. heavy breathing. <sighs> Does she need to roll like a perception check to see if this is just Captain Barbo like drooling over her? That's what I was gonna ask. <laughs> No, you find Barbo is nestled into your chest a little bit, snuggled and asleep. God damn it, I'm so comfortable. Alright, I'm going to try waking all my party members up. Guys? Guys? What? What? What is this? Do you hear I'm that? I'm gonna wake up and I would like to light a torch. Okay. What? but <laughs> I'd like to be able to see. Alright, Captain Barbo immediately sets to setting but up a torch. It's gonna know. I mean, it already knows. You can see light now, Barbo. Can Locke see light too? Since yes, he should be able to see it as well. Amazing. Am I crazy? Right. I don't see anything. You don't oh, there see. We go. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, can I send the owl to go investigate the noise quietly? Yeah. Yeah. Your <laughs> owl. Let's bring it onto the screen. Holy shit, that's huge. Let's make that's a little. A giant owl. Oh, there it's a go. snow owl. It's a night bird, man. A night bird. Day man. I can't control it. God damn it. Amazing. Shut up. <sighs> it does not represent. 
Is that Beta. Controlled by <laughs> my Lixia. There we go. You should have control over the owl now. Okay. All right, it's going. Yeah. And okay. And very quickly, your owl is going to spot something. What does it uh, look it, like? It looks like a giant snowy white person with large blue hands and claws and an ice pick or an icicle in one hand that it is going to attack the owl with once the owl like bent come, comes around this corner here. Can I dismiss it as a reaction? Yeah, you always have a ready to action. So the owl vanishes into thin air. Mm -hmm. um, um, but you've the seen them. You've seen them both. So let's roll for initiative because they are alerted to your presence by the torchlight and the owl. Whew. Uh, finally. I didn't even know I could roll that. Perfect. Let me roll initiative for our two yetis. <coughs> oh, I'm going to be like Luke. Because my name's Luke, right? Like Luke Skywalker? I thought you got mad. I thought you wanted your name to be Lucas. No, why would I get mad about that? You get mad whenever I mean, my name Luke. is Luke. No, but I don't get mad you when you do. call You do, you get Luke. very upset. I don't. You get mad when people call you short, and they're just speaking the truth. Yeah, thank you, Lil. All right, well, Gerald, you're the first one to go. Yeah, um, I will... Whew, this is really tough. Um, Did we agree to, like, put a wall up? They probably already know the cave. They're going to walk right through it. Are you getting um, smart? You've Are they? never met a Yeti before. I've never met a Yeti. Yeah, I've never... Uh, is Bigfoot smart? I don't know. You've got the same... He's pretty smart. He's pretty smart. Yeah, he's, he's managed to evade all of us for this long. So, um... Yeah, I think they're I gonna... I like that there's them. one Bigfoot and only one Bigfoot. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to move back. And I'll take a, um... I'm actually just going to, um, I need to resummon my owl. So, so that's a full action, isn't it? You tell me. I don't know. I think it is. Um, actually, I don't know. It might not be. Um, so on fire. As an action you can dismiss. I think it's probably. Action, you can cause it to reappear. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll cause the owl to reappear uh, just so it can assist. should have an owl that you can control now. Okay. And Was that the sound that the owl makes? I thought you said owls were quiet creatures. Ooh. But when they pop into and out of Ooh. existence, they have sound effects. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Give me the owl, sir. Big retconning going on here. <laughs> uh, all right, Gerald, your turn is over. And the first Yeti comes on in, passing through the alarm area, which starts ringing. What, is, what sound does your alarm make when it goes off in the morning? Um, oh! sorry. Yes, the sa it actually makes a. Um, Wait, the Dominic the Donkey one. The jingity jing. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a good crush. It, uh, it definitely makes this sound, Neil. Uh, Excellent. Yes. I, I also forgot Dominic the, the worker. Mm -hmm. This is Dominic the worker. He's nestled <laughs> in this back corner right here, sleeping. Um, uh, back left? Some of you no! can't even see. He's over Wait, here. Wait, he's way right. up there? He's nestled in think, that corner. I don't know if I would let him be there. All right, you tell me where he is. <laughs> right here. Okay, he's back over here. The save. Uh, the Yeti comes on in. How far did he move? 50s moved probably far enough for this round. He is going to use his big, evil, chilling gaze. Oh, he can move a little bit farther. Excellent. He will then actually move to here and look at the party and chilling gaze. One creature you can see. Uh, it looks like Locke and Barbo are in the front line. So he gazes. He can't fucking see. They have to see you? Yes, this, they have to see you. So he can't do that. He won't do that. I thought that we had his torch. Yeah, but you guys still can't see. They can't see the Yeti. It's not enough light. Oh. Um, instead, he will just do a full move and come up to here. Oh, that sounds like it would provoke an attack of opportunity. 
when he comes within range from Sentinel. I did you take Sentinel? Yeah, of course. Well, then you crit him for 29 points of damage. Oh, gosh. Wait, really? His... Is it because he's weak to slashing? or? No, because 7 and 12 crit. is a... Oh, no, 19. No, oh, no, 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 29. Nah. Sound... Oh, okay. No, you're totally right, 19. Yeah. And he'll come to a dead stop right here. Yeah, he will, because his speed is reduced the... to zero. Next, Yeti moves in and is going to gaze at Midori, who can see him. And he will use his <laughs> chilling gaze. Midori, you must succeed on a DC 13 constitution saving throw or take cold damage and be paralyzed. Would the Yeti know that she Oof. could see her, I guess? <coughs> the Yeti chose to go after someone with Infravision, so uh -huh. they seem to be able to know. All right, Midori, you're going to take 3d6. You take seven points of cold damage, and you are paralyzed. On each of your turns, you get a saving throw to get out. Okay. Midori. Oh. Can I eat my dinner? <laughs> Lock. Lock. Oh, sorry. Um, I heard you say Midori last. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to take a normal attack at the Yeti in front of me. A eight. Probably not going to do Wild miss. Your halberd hits the ground, sending shards of ice everywhere. Um, how desperate is this? Man, I'm going to go ahead and take my pull my master hit as well then. Uh, the, the back end. Oof. You idiot. I just woke up, okay? Whips in the air. <laughs> I'm gonna back Barbo. up slightly. Okay. okay. Go for it. Um. Oh, he backed up a bit. Fuck. I guess I'll just attempt to attack here with um, both my offhand, or my main and my offhand. Okay. Uh, I main. do have advantage, I believe, due to the fur. Wait. Why do you have advantage? Sorry, maybe I'm lying. You get sneak no, attack. No, I get sneak but... attack. Yep, my bad. Okay. Sneak. Uh, the 14 hits, doing 16 points of damage, and the 16 hits for four. Perfect. Um, did I get the owl, or is that a whole action to make come onto me? Oh, I, I didn't, didn't just specify which one. I didn't specify which one the owl would uh, would help. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, I'm not gonna wreck on. No, it, it only did 11 plus yeah, 15. There we go. And uh, then it I'm should gonna be, uh, should 11 be plus 5. 20 and four. Yeah, so it should be 24 total. Yep. Yeah, um, and then I'm gonna use. Uh, fancy footwork when I hit somebody, I can dip out movement. And where do you go? Um, I'll move like right here. Okay, Midori, you are paralyzed. So at the end of your turn, give me constitution saving throw. You pass. You break out of the paralyzation and will be free to act on your next turn. Ah. Gerald, start us off. Hmm, um... <sighs> Oh, spell slots are so tough. Um, I think I'm going to... Uh, how high is the ceiling? It varies between as tall as you and maybe 15 feet at the very center, but it's craggy. Uh, what, what? How tall is it above the Yetis? Maxing at about 15 feet in the middle. How? How Would you say a Yeti is over 500 pounds? In that ballpark of 500 pounds. Okay. Um, I am going to um, cast Magic Missile on the first Wounded Yeti. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, no, roll it three more times, please. Two more times, because that's only okay. one of three missiles. All oh, right, it's, it's 1D something plus what? 1d4 plus 1, so if you do two more, 2d4 plus 2. Can we take 4 damage off the Yeti because I'm carrying a torch? Nail, I'm sorry. Oh, good call. Unless I can carry it in my oh, mouth. Ooh, whoops, 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 whoops. Minus 4. Is it? Plus 4. There we go. You cannot carry the torch in your mouth. And you were pinging the weakest Yeti with those magic yeah. missiles, right? Yeah. So E and 3 is 11. All right, you rip into the Yeti for 11 points of damage. Okay. The oh, wait, I just got my spell slots. Hang on. Yeah. Yeti goes. Um, and how far is it to lock? It is going to have to step into lock's range. Stop. And it will stop and die on the spot. See ya. Uh, so the Yeti goes down after that. Halberd hits it right across the throat. 
bringing this bright red line on its otherwise white fur. Its mate is lost in an enraged fever and charges Locke straight on using its chill, uh, can use its chill and gaze and make two claw attacks in a round. Excellent. So it will gaze at Locke to begin. What's the saving throw? Constitution. 13 or higher. You oh, fear this beast. And then it will claw you once for nine points of damage and claw you a second time with a miss, I believe. It scratches your armor. Does plate mail confer any like bonus defense against like slashing or anything or not? Is it same? No, no? non-attack okay. specific. Okay, so I take nine points of damage. You take nine points of damage from the very angry Yeti before you. Lock, it's your turn. <clears throat> um, I am going to uh, take a normal halberd attack. Um, I'm going to- Wait a minute. Uh, no, not yet. I'm gonna toss a superiority die. Um, on my, I think, precision, um, which is, so I roll a 1d8. Oh my god, okay, that is a miss. That is the number you needed to hit. Oh, Yeti's 12? low AC, yeah. <coughs> oh. They don't have much armor, boys. big and furry. Uh, I think so you're dead, Steve. Strike it for 12. <laughs> All right, then I do 12 points of damage. Um... Uh, I think, um, oh, I could do my bonus action here, my Polar Master, 13. So that's. That'll hit for five. And then. Catch the on the square of the nose, sending blood running down its face. I believe I'm. I think I'm good at that. All right. Barbo. Um, I'm gonna walk and flank the Yeti. Mm hmm. And I'm gonna attack him with both, uh, or I'm gonna only attack him with my main hand. Okay. That's all I got. Critical hit for 10 and seven. You run the Yeti through in his back with your rapier, sticking it out the front end of his gut, his little metal point, pulling it and back out. And then I'm gonna fancy footwork away. Go away. Wow. That seems like that was 15 was that 30? feet. The 30 would be back to where you started. Right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Midori, you can move. The Yetis are bringing death to your party. Are you going to help them? I'm gonna go, ne go a little closer and Link swing it. my scythe. All right, the scythe what? comes from the side. <sighs> Completely missing everyone and everything in the room. Maybe you think she's flanking. Gerald, uh, you want to tell me what happens when she rolls a natural one? <laughs> what is the what is the root cause? Are we playing? Are we playing Shadowrun or are we? <laughs> is it a critical glitch or are we playing D and D? <laughs> uh, it can be a critical glitch. Yeah, go for it. Oh, a critical glitch would probably uh, definitely hit one of the other party members. They'd have to roll an attack on another party member. Probably, preferably one that's not very short. Wait, are you able to dodge it? Uh, it would be like like a critical glitch would be like some she would probably swing her scythe at someone else and it would be a normal attack roll and then it would go against their AC. All right, give me an attack roll against Chad, Brad, against Brad. You're really gonna hit me, Lily? Probably not. It's dark in here. But you never know. Yeah, most likely no. <laughs> uh, okay. So the scythe <laughs> comes wide, missing the Yeti, and just runs right into Captain Barbo. Not I'm the so not the sorry. bladed point, but the, the metal haft of it I'm hits so him sorry. square in the chest. We got XCOM, dude. Seriously. Uh, uh, can I drop my torch? You can. Like I would have done that, yeah. Thank you. All right, you throw your torch to the ground, and it's fine for now. Gerald, it's your turn. Magic missile, the Yeti. Um, Just I roll three d four plus three. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's easier than playing with spell slots. Do okay. They all strike him perfectly, putting more dots on him. He's bleeding from his nose, from the hole all the way through him, from the many magic missiles, from the halberd hack on his arm. The Yeti is looking haggard and Be close gone, Yeti. to death. But he will once again multi attack, uh, aiming a chill gaze at Captain Barbo. Cons. Trying to hold him in place. Um, I'm going to do an attack on him for, for a reaction on that. 
you get to use Sentinel on attacks? Yeah, boy. That's why I take it. Fantastic. You will hit him for yeah. nine and kill the Yeti as Barbo fails his saving throw. Wait, does he kill the Yeti before the Yeti gets it off? I believe so. I can prevent their attacks. Hey, Amen. All right, all right. Before he fails his saving throw, the Yeti goes down. Koi Boo not banning Come Sentinel, on. dude. Don't worry, Koi Boo. I just took six points of damage last time. That's true. That's good enough. Um... Yeti's, with this Yeti's death, as it slumps to the ground, the only sound left is the, the panting of your own breath in this cave. Did the Yeti's, the Yeti couple have a child? Were they male oh, yeah, and female Yeti? Today? Did we check? Yeah, he said the female Yeti. He said Yeti. partner. Oh, partner. I didn't the, the partner? We killed the husband and then we killed the wife, basically. Um, can I send the owl to start scouting again? Totally. Yeah. Can we, like, go to college? skin the Yeti for its fur? Absolutely. Right, I'd like some Yeti fur. I'd also like to sleep and get a night's rest. Can we? Are All we right. able to salvage food off of this as well, easily, or no? Yeah, you, you can have meat. Go. If you don't mind eating Yeti, you could totally do it. I've eaten a Yeti. I would like the fur, though. When have you eaten a Yeti, Mr. Sailor Man? All right, I haven't eaten a Yeti. <laughs> okay. So we can save rations for the night then, if we can eat his. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little tough and gamey, uh, but whatever. Okay. You know what I have done though, Locke? Used a blue microphone. Blue microphones. Right. Discount code. We are uh, taking our. Are we taking our short rest then? Yeah, you're taking your short rest here. Okay. I'm just um, letting my elixir search the cave. Am I able to roll my hit dice? Yes. Go ahead and roll your hit dice. You will be unmolested for the rest of the night. Um. Wait, what? There you go. I want to skin Six. both the Yeti. You can skin the Yetis. Give me a nature check for how good you are at skinning Yetis without ruining the fur. Oh, you should let me skin it. Oh, oh shit! The first Yeti uh. doesn't go very well. The first Yeti, <laughs> you like. I tell Cover. Gerald to back off. I really want to skin this Yeti. But I, you're bad. Oh, no. Ten, you're ten, bad. ten is good. Okay, That's fine. Ten is, is salvageable, it? right? Yeah. You, okay. you get most of the Yeti in good condition. Okay. The rest of the cave is clear. I don't see anything near. I know him. Well, the one Yeti's for in my inventory. What right. happened to the other Yeti? It just is completely ruined. I messed up the skinning. I've Wait. never skinned the Yeti before. There's actually... <laughs> I've skinned I'm... the Yeti. I'm... Wait a minute. Um, I tell them... Hang on. Is there a baby Yeti? Yeah, <laughs> it was actually... I just can't rhyme it. Can um... Yetis be tamed? Can the Yeti be pregnant? Uh... Not anymore. Hey, this is not a maybe. There's actually a baby. Two babies in uh, the cave beyond. Well, what are we to leave two orphan yetis without their parents? We might as well Have pick I... them out of their misery and collect my... them as well. Let's go. In my many what? travels, Koibu, can you tame a yeti? Have I ever heard of anybody like animal handling their way through um, you have heard people friend of the Yeti. who have claimed that they've ridden on giant octopus it's and Let's stop 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 i don't oh. know where to go if you want to take me in flew dragons i mean people have told you all sorts of tall tales taming a yeti is definitely one of the tall tales you've heard i don't know how i'm gonna attempt to tame happen. a yeti i gerald i'll follow you left can, can he attempt to tame one and i attempt to tame the other one because i have a nature check who's got some sick animal handling I mean, I've been keeping Midorian check pretty well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was... Nice one, Steve. Really? Thanks. Bullied our friend. Uh, Gerald, I'll follow you. I don't know where to go. It's right up up there, but we, we're going to alert them once we come oh, in. So, like, what check is this, Neil? It's to a tame a yeti? Right? Yeah. Well, let me, when you say tame a yeti, clearly you're not talking about, like, taking a wild beast and making it a perfect companion. Because no. that doesn't happen overnight. So what is what are you trying to do more specifically? I want the Yeti to pretty much be like a dog, where they're like, chill with me, but like if I point it at something, it'll go and attack it. So oh, you're, you're wanting to bring a Yeti from... Into your dog. I want a Yeti that'll like... fight shit. Um, he might not be my best friend, but he might attack me. 
it's that's a tiny idiot, though. That's a process, right? That doesn't happen oh, overnight, yeah. right? So you can... What is your short-term goal? Rather than My short-term goal? goal will be to make it so the Yeti doesn't fuck me up. All right, uh, cool. On the daily. Excellent. And Locke, you're leaving them to their Yeti devices, right? I just wanted to take a nap. I Can don't, we feed a Yeti? Train dogs or whatever we're doing. <laughs> they're not dogs, Locke. They're Yetis. <laughs> How are you going to keep these under control? You don't think they're going to give us away if we? I keep you under control, don't I, Locke? I don't and you keep much of anything Yeti, under okay? control, but okay. We're just going to get rid of the dynamic lighting. Couldn't keep your family under access. control. Because it's to this extent. Wait, I meant like, uh, didn't your parents like kick you out or whatever? And what do you mean you by know? that? Didn't your whole crew mutiny against you? What? I left my crew to come join you. How often does a pirate leave his own crew by his own choice? And you a only came to find who's... us after the death of your only brother. Well, and you're going to sit here and brother. attack me He's about what happens nephew. with my family? Children, children. We have more pressing matters to attend yeah, to. Yeah, we have to tame, tame a yeti. You tame? You really think you're gonna tame these yetis? Midori, don't you believe in me? I believe in you, but I think it's kind of messed up that we just killed their parents and you want to make them into your pet now for a lifetime of servitude. You know, for once I agree misery? with Midori's story, I think we should probably kill them. Quite gory. I am Thank attempting to tame a yeti, because I know I'm about to roll a nat 20, okay? All right, Barbo, get in there, look at the yetis, and give me your very best charisma check. They're <laughs> sentient creatures, so animal handling won't work. That's good. Um, charisma check. Isn't he yeah, covered just... in yeti blood? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to be very charismatic. So can we say that might be a disadvantage? Right. <laughs> it's just a higher DC. I was going to... Okay, roll, roll, roll. Can I do one for each? Why don't we start with one for start your one. very initial... Yeah. Not bad. You walk up wow. and... I guess you just look really non-threatening or, or something, and they get two <laughs> baby yetis <laughs> look over to you. And one um, of them just reaches out its arms and waddles over and wraps them around you and holds you at your waist. You just killed right. their parents. They're there, Yeti. I'm here now. New call dad. Me, call me Daddy Barbara. How old are these Yeti, are we thinking? Are these like days old, weeks old, months? Do we like, like a Seems general? Like months. Weeks. Oh. If the normal Yeti was maybe eight feet tall, okay. these are maybe three and a half. So okay, gotcha. they're okay. children. I, I look at Captain Barba and I see how fatherly he is to these Yetis. So I'm going to take the Yeti's fur that I skinned and wrap myself around it and approach them as well. Wonderful. The other one comes up to you and wraps its arms on the inside of the skin around your waist. And uh, the one on Barbo starts to lick the blood off of him. Uh, this is colossal. Seems like it really enjoys the, the taste of blood here because it's just lapping up. That's all, all right. We'll, on you. we'll get the other more blood. Lapping up the blood on Midori. Um, I'm gonna. Could I put my harness on him and like you know how like little like little kids they put like those backpacks on them with like ropes or whatever? Can I do that with the yeti? Yeah, give me a persuasion check to try and coax the yeti into the harness. Oh, the oh, yeti is perfect. into yeah. it, dude. Totally, the, the little baby yeti wears the harness. It's a little yes. big, but you can cinch it up with a little bit of rope. Yeah, yeah. he just wants another thing to carry his shit. How... <laughs> Wait, how small are these? Like, how much do they weigh? Three and a half feet tall. They probably weigh like 60 pounds. Oh, they're the same size as Gerald. Gerald, we got you some friends. <laughs> I, I like them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will name him uh, Damon. Damon? Damon? Yeah, Damon. D-A-E-M-O-N. Wait, am I crazy? Is that pronounced demon? Would it be Damon? D A E M O N, isn't that just D -A -E -M -O -N. pronounced D A E M O N. D A E M O N. I would have named him something cute. You have your Yeti. Fluffy. Name your Yeti. Okay, I'm going to name him, name him Chad. <laughs> Demon. Chad the Yeti. Hello, little Demon and Chad. Chad. I'm going to fluff up his head a little bit and affectionately pet him and stuff while wearing the skin of his dead mother. Yep. Uh, I am your mother once... now. Demon. Once he's licked the blood off of your legs and everything, he goes to the cloak and starts lapping up the inside of it, <clears throat> gnawing on what little flesh remains there. That's kind of cute. And I guess you guys pass the night in more comfort now that the two of you have yetis to keep you warm. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Gerald and Locke are forced to sleep on the cold ground with only each other for warmth in their armor, and they Should've have terrible a night's rest. Uh, but we can just go to the next day. Like, in the morning, kid. the sun has risen. It's actually been up for a little while. You guys were so tired you slept in. It's a, a brand new day out there. What are you going to do? Um, I'd like to feed the Yeti some of my rations. Oh my Excellent. God. Excellent. I'm going to take one of mine, and then I'm going to feed him one. So Wait, we'll how large are these Yeti again? Three and, Three and a half feet. Could okay. I just eat a little bit less and then you can meet the rest one of my ration ration? between the can two? Can I of them. feed the dead parents meat to the Yeti? Can you not? I won't yes. let you do that, Midori. Why? It's fucked. That's These what she wants. To I do. would rather than be okay. slaves. It's the circle of life. To right. feed my adopted child. Hey, okay. that's your that's your child. I don't that's need you to tell me you how to use. parent, Brad. Okay, come here, Chad. <laughs> oh, now that she is Chad, she's over me. All right, uh, you feed the parents to the young. They have no semblance of idea of what's happening, and they chow down enthusiastically, covering okay. their white fur and blood. And then after they've eaten, they push themselves on the ground to try and like rub the blood off of their chests and make for the exit of the cave. Um, could I rename my Yeti to Blue? You can. Thank you. <laughs> to Blue? Yeah, Blue Yeti. Velociraptor. Oh, nice job. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, it's the next day. You're um, at like... the edge of your cave, looking out over your island again. Lock, uh, what are we doing? As I pet my <laughs> blue yeti. Well, we should probably go back to the... Uh, um, there's a summit at the top. What's the base? There's a name for base of like a cliff or whatever. But we should probably go back to that area and see what was going on down there. There are still guards stationed outside. Uh, I agree. Should we maybe wait for nighttime again, or do you think um, now is the perfect time during the day? I mean, we can use the elder scout ahead of us. I don't know how stealthy you guys are. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, you walk back out into the forest along the trail that was covered, and make your way back to the main trail. Can I get a perception check from whoever is in the front of the party? Can the owl also roll one? Uh, with... Can you fly under the canopy of a forest as an owl? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, give me an owl perception check. Okay. You guys are amazing. Uh, both the owl and our beloved Barbo spot a single soldier walking along the trail from the camp at the base of the mountain towards what was the camp at the beach. You can even hear him muttering with your natural 20 perception check, Brad, about stupid message have to fucking be delivered. It's so cold. I hate this path on my own. God damn it. Next time I'm going to get John to do it. Oh, shit, he owes me one. Um, I'll, I will relay the information back of but where they are. If I he's a messenger, really we should absolutely intercept that message. I agree. Yeah. Lily, whack, will, you, whack. will you hold the kids? Don't worry. I'll, I'll take care of them. How far but... away is this guy? Maybe 150 feet from Brad. And I think, you know, you guys are then like 10 and 15 feet yep. behind him. Brad, get him. Um, Barbara, whack yeah, him. Yeah, I will whack stealth him. up. Give me a stealth check. No. Do I get close no. enough so I can attack him before he notices? I'm going to give the guard a perception check, and the stillness and quietness of the frozen wasteland is going to give him advantage on okay. his checks to hear you coming. I'm pretty sure he's going to hear you, though. Uh, no! He doesn't know. <laughs> no, he oh does not. Oh my god. They just think I'm the most stealthy man. Right past you, he's so busy muttering to himself and like thinking of his own little storyline in his head that he doesn't hear you coming. And I'd like to get a rapier to his neck. All right, you slip up behind him. Give me a roll to hit as a, you know, getting it to him quietly and quickly with advantage because it doesn't know you're there. So you get the rapier right to his neck and he freezes in place. His monologue ceases. I'm going to kind of just he, like take him back with me into the forest where our party members are. He drops his spear and just walks backwards with you saying nothing. Yep. Um, so I'll bring him back. Okay. Uh, do you have some questions for him? My lord, I say in a sarcastic tone. Oh lord, 
I mean, you can drop the attitude. Does he have a, any type of parchment or anything on him? Like a message that he was hand-delivering, or...? He's got a shield, and he dropped his spear in the snow already. Uh, he's got his cloak around him. He's got a water skin and a little bit of food, uh, but doesn't seem to have a letter on him or a note on him. All right, I mean, I what guess you... we need to wait for him to wake up, and we need to figure out what message he was going to deliver. He's, not, he's, he's awake. He's oh, awake. He, oh, he is awake. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah sorry. I mean, I guess we're interrogating him. What, what message hey. would you... Yeah. What is your message? You better tell us, or we'll teach you a lesson. To tell the relayers to the ship that we need more whiskey. <laughs> what are you all doing here? Why have you brought so many soldiers near? Um, I'm not really sure, but we're supposed to be looking for a crown, a magic crown. What was a magic crown for? I, I, our Lord wanted it. I, I don't know the specifics. I'm just, I'm just a levy. What were you relaying a message for? We needed more whiskey at What camp? were you actually relaying a message for? We needed more whiskey I'll give him a camp. little cut. A Ow. little cut. Okay. Um, uh, the real message is that we needed a, um, I don't know. We just, we, we ran out of whiskey. I was just relaying. <laughs> oh God, please, please. Let's feed him to our children. No, 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 please, please, please. I think Chad's hungry. Do they look hungry? I think yes. Well, yeah, they, can't they always be hungry? They're growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they're growing boys, Locke. We have to, you know, this guy's useless. How many officers are here? Tell us soon, or the Yetis will make you disappear. Uh, let's see. We, we came with with ten spears, um, and then there's <clears throat> the the captain in, in charge of everything. Uh, her name is. Uh, Bronwyn, Bronwyn Steel. She's she's in charge. And uh, what type of weapon does she use? She uses a sword. So not the knight. Not the knight. Who is the knight with the axe? Oh, Greta. She's a mean, mean one. Never says anything. I I, I think her tongue's been cut out. She's always silent, but ridiculously strong. Holy shit! She beheaded someone last night. It, 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 we she didn't even use a brace. She just blopped it off in one blow. What did she behead him for? Desertion. He uh, left his post and took a nap instead of keeping watch. Wow. Does anyone in your party Respond. use magic? Respond, or the results will be tragic. Uh, not in my party, no, no. But but we there, three spears have been detached to the first talon, and three have been detached to the third talon. And on the third talon, the the captain in charge of all of that is named Billy, and he's a wizard, a mage, a spellcaster. <laughs> Um, oh. is, are we able to, like, uh, I guess, like, do a perception check to see if he's lying about the whiskey thing? I don't know. It just seems that like... would be a insight check. An insight check? It seems kind of unbelievable, but... From how it was, it seemed, like, pretty believable to me. To me. Yeah, he seems like he's telling the truth. Unless he rolled really, really well on his uh, deception check. <laughs> hmm. Um, and we search him and he's, like, got nothing of importance He's got on no him. notes, nothing, yeah. So there were how many spears here on this island? What is a spear? Uh, How many is it? Spears, eight soldiers and a knight. Uh, there, there should be four on this island, plus, plus um, Captain Captain Steel and, and Greta and a, a small group of you know camp makers and, and and laborers and cooks and stuff. And you said you guys are searching for a crown here. What are um, mm -hmm. what's, what what are Billy and the other people searching for on the other island? Uh, the crown too. We we don't know where it is. It was. Last seen on one of these islands a while ago, some years back, and vanished. So we've been ordered to, to hunt down the, the, the yetis and the kobolds um, and search all the ruined settlements and abandoned places looking for the, the crown. And uh, if it's not in any of those places, then it, it's, it's probably with the rocks. They're, they're nested on the third talon. And um, we don't want to go there. They're really big and scary, so we're, we're trying to search everything else first. I swear, I'm telling you the truth, I'll tell you anything you want. Just let me live. I still think we should feed him. Um, Please don't feed me. Or do you need things. anything else out of him, Locke? How much is Lord having to normally pay you guys? Shit. We're every we're owed a certain amount of time in his army every year, and my, I drew the short straw from the village, so we're I'm just here out of 
obligation. What are you getting paid for this expedition? Nothing. Literally nothing. I don't have to pay taxes instead. Um, Can you fight? So something like um, no, we don't need this guy as a fighter. So, so like an average day salary for like a like a guard or something would be what one gold per day? Is that what we said before, or is that too high? Uh, that's a little high. That's for like a, a well-trained mercenary. Your regular everyday guards. <clears throat> I have salaries for them. Okay. <laughs> Could I? Okay. What if I toss this guy? Um, they they usually make about a silver a day. About a silver a day and ten silver is really gold. Nice. 10 silver to the gold, yeah. Okay. So what if I toss this guy two gold, and I'll, and I'll tell him to see if he can ask around and figure out what exactly this crown stuff is, and then meet us back here at night and tell us what he, what he can find out. I'll give him another two awesome. gold. Okay. I like the sound of that. Um, also, we want to see if, ask him to creep around for um, another entrance or something to the How caves. How can you verify this guy's loyalty? I do agree. With what that. do you mean? He's just a. More, he's but we just, are paying. We're paying him. I mean, I imagine he wants gold. Yeah. So I, I've given him two gold. If you come back and tell us if you can find anything out, I'll give you two more. If you give us good information, I'll give you significantly more gold. If you find Sound. us a nice entrance, to the cave or something, I will give you, and I'll show him just like twenty gold. Well, okay. Which cave? Okay. Um, what cave? Like the big one where we saw Greta. Oh. Like a, another entrance to like that area. Yeah, that that's the only way. It's a, a stone ladder that goes up to a, a cave, a, a small outpost from the people who were here before the world, before the island sank. Got it. Yeah, it's the only way in and out. Um, that's our, our, our base of operations here on the second Talon. Um, so I'll go and ask around and then try to sneak out at night and meet you here. One Hi. more thing, guard. How renowned is the wizard on the third talon? Billy? Not powerful. Yeah, Billy. On like a, a scale of one to 100? One to, how many levels are there in D&D? &D? 20. 20. Five. On a, yeah. on a scale of one to 20, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'd say he's, I don't know, he's cast spells. He's really powerful. He could shoot a bird out of the sky with the blink of his eyes. It's crazy. You can set fire to something with his hands. Yeah, well, we can all do that. Like, what has he done that's, like, really neat? Um, he racks his brain for an example of Billy's power. What's really neat? I want to hear the thing that he did, does that's sweet. Okay. Well, there was this one time where... Uh, we were fighting some some big hairy yetis, like bigger versions of what you got right there. And I, w I was about to take a blow. I, w I was certain to die. You know, it was when we all first landed here and we were first making our, our camp on the second talon. And the, the yeti's claw was coming right at me. It was going to rip my throat out. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a magical shield popped into existence. And I didn't die. And instead, the, the yeti hand slapped away from it. Um, and then there was another time where there's like this swarm of flying daggers that were going back and forth everywhere in the entrance to a cave. And, uh, you know, it, it killed like four kobolds that tried to run out right through it. It was beautiful. Little suckers just evaporated. And um, those are the only two spells I've seen him use directly. I mean, he shoots like little bolts of fire all the time and he makes things glow. And um, Could I do like an insight check to see if we believe that this guy is actually going to come back with the two gold or for the two gold? Does he seem... I, he I guess he Give seems like an animal. Yeah, with a 14, you're reasonably confident that he believes the story he's telling. Okay. He intends and... to come back. Okay, cool. Okay. If you Very don't come good. back, I'm feeding you to my son. Hey, all right. Well, I I don't care. I just am trying to... I, I, I'm, I'm, okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Please don't kill me. Okay. Just do what you're told, and you'll get lots of gold. Aye, aye, Captain. Ah, I'm the captain here. Aye, aye, Captain? Yeah, he's the only captain here. Okay. At least he seems to think so. Okay, we'll see you back here at night, then. He runs off, grabs his spear from where he left it, and takes off down the trail. During the day while we wait for him, can I um catch, like, a rabbit or something? Possibly, yeah. 
Probably. What I need to roll? An attack roll? Um, sure. I'm gonna try and catch like two rabbits. Yeah, there's not a lot of game around here, but you do go ahead and grab yourself one rabbit. So with the rabbit, um, I'm gonna split it between the two yetis, and basically I'm gonna try and teach them that like when I like point, they're allowed to go. So they're probably like trying to like run at like the dead rabbit on the ground, and I'm gonna wait for them to calm down, and then when they're calm, I'll like do a point, and then I'll let them go, and then let them get it. So I'm trying to like. Mm -hmm. Show them like the action means like no, I'm allowing them it, to go. We give them lots of positive affirmation. Like good, yeah. good boy. <laughs> okay, give me an intelligence check. Barbie. Just straight, um, s straight intelligence check. Uh, there it is. Jeezy, crazy, yeah. It seems I'm, to be working. I train pets, dude. Yeah, it, it seems to be working. The Yetis eat the rabbit, and they they seem to be getting the idea of point means eat time. Cool. Um, but they, they're hungry. They're really hungry. I'll give them some rations, since they went and did the rabbit thing. Sure. Give them, um, I'll split it with me, and then I'm sure Midori can split her meal, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the rest of you guys are eating the parents, right? Oh, wait, we have more parents still? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah there's two full oh, yetis. Okay, well, we're, gonna, we're still going to feed them oh, parents. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm still feeding them the parents. Yeah, I'll, still, I'll feed mine parents. Actually, yeah. you, you know guys... what? Mine, I'm not going to. Okay. okay uh, well, fine. yours is getting pretty jealous then, because the other one's getting all the food it can eat. Oh, sure, I'll let him eat. Yeah, all right, okay. Excellent. Uh, you spend the rest of the day in the cave, yeah? Quiet um, wait, yourself. are we able to set up, like, a safe-ish kind of camp? I don't know, in terms of, like, layout and size, where we can kind of, like, see the base of that mountain to just kind of keep an eye on it from the distance, just to kind of get a general idea of what's going on, movements to and from? Uh, yeah, you can set up a relatively safe spot, like a blind in the woods that will have a view of the trail leading away from the camp, but to get a view of the camp itself would put you in a risky position. Okay. You'd a have view, to cross that trail back and forth. A view of it going going there and back, and then we can kind of keep tabs on how many people are moving back and forth. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you are sitting and waiting, maybe like four hours later, there are two guards, including the one that you have just captured, mm -hmm. uh, hauling a barrel between the two of them. One of them's got it from the front, the others have it from the back, and they're walking back to camp. Um, half an hour, 45 minutes later, one of them heads back the other way. Uh, and then a few minutes after that, you see a detachment of maybe 20 people, 15 people, heading out all together along this road. Um, Do we see Breta or the, does it, the Bronwyn Steel person with them? Greta, not nope, Breta. No, you don't see Bronwyn or Greta. Does it look like they're in a hurry or anything? Or like they're... Um... They're marching. Okay. They look like they're, they've got somewhere to go. Uh, and you can hear the commanders yelling at them. Keep your boots clean. Stay on the trail. Hey, stop playing with the snow. That sort of stuff. The okay. group looks fairly undisciplined. They all look like fairly fresh green troops. Um, yeah, some closer to nightfall, the group marches back to the camp. And then about an hour or so after nightfall, you are approached once more by your seemingly loyal, question mark, servant. Wow. Can I do a perception check and just like make sure there isn't anybody I guess coming with him in the Go for it. I'll send the owl up too. Do the same thing. Give me a check with the owl? Yeah. Yeah, they're fine. Nothing's there. Alright. All right. This guy has returned. Did you find out any more information about the crown? I did. I did. Um I asked what, what it was for, and I got beaten for that. Uh, but, I, but I knew you wouldn't accept that as a response. So I asked around to a few other people a little bit more discreetly, more of like complaining that we were here for so long. Uh, one of the guys said he was standing watch when, uh, <clears throat> when, when Captain Steele was talking to Billy, and that it's something about, uh, they called it a crown of domination. Um, would I understand that to mean a crown of domination is something that would allow you to control another person or thing? That sounds like what it might do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really don't know actually, what it does, but... Like, could I know exactly what that does by writing an arcana check? Give me an arcana check. Sure. I'm not metagaming. You've heard of such a thing before. It's a, a well-fabled tale. It's what, um... a crown that is 
kind of forces an allegiance of the wearer to someone who holds a, a specific key associated with the crown. The key can take any form. It could be a gem. It could be a bracelet. Um, crowns of domination are rare, but they can be recoded to different uh, tokens. Would we have any so, information of such a crown existing based on what we'd read in that book that Wyatt, um, that I think we left with Wyatt? Ooh, give me an intelligence check across the board from the party. See if you can remember anything that you learned while reading. How do I roll these things? I literally have seven to intelligence, and I just roll dog shit every time. It's insane. Well, you're a sheltered gnome. You grew up underground. You probably don't know about this. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Brad's not I've paying read. attention. Locke has no I'm chilling with my Yeti, dude. Uh, Midori, you've heard of Crowns of Domination as a cleric when you were growing up. The, the Jexel figures love the idea of Crown of Domination. But they, they don't seem to know of any about. In fact, you would know that they are there's sort of like a dearth of them. They're more of historical notes than active magic items in use. I will pipe up. Do you guys, do you think that he was trying to get this crown to use it on the on the vampire, vampire lady? It's entirely have, possible. That loose, yeah. What um, could could we go through our um? Could we go through the the book with us or no? I could do a history check. So remember, um, before we left the uh, before we left the place, I asked to I asked um, Wyatt to ship um, the translated notes or whatever to the um, whiskey. No, no, what was it called? The the wailing whale or whatever. The wench, mm -hmm. the wailing wench or whatever. Wench's whale. Yeah. yeah. They were gonna be they waiting for you when you came back from this mission. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Then um. All right, well, I guess we know. Do, do you have any idea, um, I guess, talking to the soldier again, how, how close do you think they are to uncovering this crown? Do you know if they're making good progress? Oh, wait, they haven't found it yet. Uh, I, I def we, we definitely have, you know, there's always the talk of we're probably going to have to go to the rock's nest to get it. Magical item like that, super strong or whatever. is The probably rock's nest? The... Mm-hmm, the rock's nest. Is that those big birds? Yeah, it's the, the really big birds, like 100-foot wingspan. Giant flying falcon eagle-y like thingies. You'll you'll see them around if you spend a, a day or two here. Do Can't they like them. shiny things? He shrugs. I don't know. Birds like shiny things, but it's always been my experience that the greatest magical treasures are in the Friendship. hands of those that can hold them. Oh, yeah, friends too. Friendship. Okay. Um. Where did the, where's the yeah, rock's nest at? Do you know where these are about? Third Talon. That's why we sent Billy there, because he's got magic. He might be able to, you know, better save his people from fighting them. That's uh, up a couple hundred feet on a cliff ledge. Hard to get to. Um, but supposedly, if you can scale the mountain, there's a, a shorter route to it. I don't know. I haven't been to the Third Talon yet. Is Billy already up there? Billy's there with three spears. Can you get... Transitioned over there, maybe. Change. Mm -mm. Okay. A spear is eight soldiers each, right? Yeah. Right. Eight soldiers and a, a person leading it. Usually, you know, some spears are going to be a little light, some might be heavy, but that's your reliable. Usually. That's a small army. How, how do we deal with that? Should we um, lock? Should we row over to there and see if we can scale the mountain? Yeah, I mean that seems to be our only option. Um... Is it going to go after the rock? Jesus. We're going after Billy. What, um, I mean, what do you think we should do? I mean, we should go, we should need, we need to get this crown before these guys do, I think. I well, guess they don't know that the crown is in there. They're not sure yet. Well, I mean, it seems the most likely place if they haven't uncovered it in a cave yet. Um, mm -hmm. if we're done, could we, could we, um, um, could we dismiss the guard? Um, so I guess I'll I'll toss him the I'll, I'll, I'll five gold is what I said I'd give him if he brought us back good information so I give him five more gold, um, and then can I tell him to meet us back here in in six days and that if we get off this island without anyone knowing that we're here right take I, him with us um th no no I'll, I'll I'll toss him ten more gold. Yeah, mum's the word, man. It's really easy not to say anything. You just keep your mouth shut. Can I ask him where he, uh, what his name is and where he lives? Uh <sighs> Yeah, my my name is Dave. <laughs> Hi, Dave. The improv, dude. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Dave. Uh, I'm from the Destros Plains. You know, I live a, on a coastal village, sort of near what's the Cindy River. Dave, what's your last name? Oh, I'm not a noble. I don't have a last name. I'm just Dave. 
Oh, yeah. Although, if I had a last name, it would probably be Daveson, because my father's name was Dave, too. Oh. Dave Davey, got it. Yeah, my, my mates call me Davey. Cool, thank you. Alright, sounds good. I'll see you later, Dave. Alright, I guess we're heading to the, um, to the other island, then, and we're gonna try to scale that mountain and get to the rocks before the other guys, too. Great. Uh, um, you get a robot. You leave Dave Davison behind and head back to your rowboat. Mm -mm. Uh, we never rolled a check for how well hidden your rowboat is. So who was the one hiding it? I, I was the one hiding captain. it, and I do believe that I said like I want to well, take yeah. time and like hide it really well. But yeah. Why don't you take the highest nature check in the party, because you all work together on this, and roll it at advantage for how that's well you can hide the rowboat. What? I'm 100% the highest that's nature Gerald, check. That's Gerald. Go for it, Gerald. Advantage nature check. I can't screw this up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got an advantage check. Your, today. <laughs> uh, your boat has been undisturbed, but you do see fresh tracks in yeah. the vicinity. Uh, <laughs> small, little dog-like tracks, as if a pack of kobolds have come through here. Uh, I mean, we have time to get on the boat and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you can you can get in the boat and sail around the island. Do you want to go the north way or the south way? Around Whatever it? the way is not where the ship is. No, can I talk to the, the party real quick? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss our plan just really briefly. So they sent 24 soldiers and a wizard and three commanders to take on these birds. So mm -hmm. I think either way, we either fight them, which is a lot of dudes, or we fight the birds. Either option seems not good, right? Yeah, probably. Isn't Our best there... bet here is probably to do something stealthy. Do they, do they yeti okay. on the boat? Yeah. With... Just, just yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. Locke can even Did walk out to... on the water. Um, even then, there's like four spears here, and then the Greta trick, and like... Yeah, so that's right. So it's about equal. Like either so, way, we, yeah. we just can't take on a straight fight, yeah. I just have to roll well on stealth mm. stuff, I think. Okay. Mm. All right. You sail around the edge and if you all right so if you undertake this journey at night no one will ever notice that you've done this but you're not going to be able to necessarily head in the right direction i would make a, our captain our sea captain give us some sort of navigation check and if you pass this, you go in the right direction if you fail you've missed the island and god knows where you end up can Holy we give that person an advantage because the owl is scouting 120 feet ahead Mm, no, because if it's pitch black and you have to sail nine miles, being 120 feet ahead of you doesn't really help. Can I get advantage because I was a captain for many years and I have a natural naval <laughs> sense? Well, yeah, yeah, we'll give you an appropriate check. I just want to lay this in front of you that at night you're going to need a check to pass. During the day, you can do it, no problem, but you'll probably get spotted. I think we have to go at night. Um, yeah. During the day seems silly. Uh, so, Captain Bad Brad Barbo, you can navigate by the stars if they're visible. So, let's say it's a 25% chance of being a cloudy night. So, roll me a D100. Oh, that's adorable. We're like a family, Midori, you and I. Give me a, a D100. Perfect. It is not um, cloudy, so you can see the scour stars. Give me a perception check at advantage for navigating by the stars. Perfect. Okay. I was a captain you, for many years, Locke. Yes, that. It's about four hours to row across. You go at night, two or three hours there, two to three hours to get there. So somewhere an hour or so before dawn, you arrive at the next Talon. I'm going to feed the Yeti. Do the command stuff again. Mm -hmm. uh, you've butchered some of the parents and brought them with you in the keel of your ship here, and yeah. you've been feeding them to their children. The not, the bra so not the brains, though. Yeah, right, you don't the want them to get... No. Get the mad cow disease or whatever? No, I don't want mad yetis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. You arrive on the next Talon a few hours before dawn. You pull up on the... You look for a spot to land first off because there's a lot of steep cliffs and terrible landing places. Uh, Barbo, do you want to go right or left around the island looking for a landing place? Um, I'm going to say we go right. Always take the righteous path. You go to the right side, and after three miles of searching the coastline, you find a little sandy beach um, right at the base of a mountain. So you've got, like, 
30 feet of beach and then like cliff. Does it look disturbed before we... Nope. Pristine nope. Okay. sand, untouched by any feet. We'll stay there. Or I'll yeah. dock us in there. Is the boat hideable there? You'll have to drag it on shore and haul it into the woods a little bit. Okay. So you got to move it a few hundred feet, but it can be done. Um, and as you arrive and hide your bush, give me nature, nature. check at advantage again, Malixia. Yes. Fantastic. Mr. What is your name? <laughs> Jerry Knott. Jerry Janot. Jerry Gannot, yeah. Not wonderful. All right, you hide your, you hide your boat. And uh, it's time to do what? You're roughly... Time to scale a mountain. Time to scale here. a goddamn mountain. That's what we're doing. All right. Do you know... I mean, a mountain's a big thing. You know where the rock's nest is, where you want to reach. Are you asking? Maybe that's, maybe that's step one, is finding the nest so you know where to scale the mountain. Wait, I, I'm sorry. Just so that the people in the audience know, because they might not know. When you say the rock's nest, what are you, what are you talking about when you say rock? I believe we to touch on that again. It's a yeah, good question. Cause... A rock is a giant bird. Okay, that's and just the name of the bird, a, gotcha. Yeah, it's the, the name of the creature. And I'm going to give you a picture that will help uh, help with the scaling of giant birds. That is not a great description. Here we go. They are this big. Got oh, the eagles eagle. from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look, she's ho oh, it's holding Chad and it's talons or whatever. The Yeti it's going to be eating from you guys. No. It's mm. elephant. no. It's an elephant idiot. Um, would, um, no one in our It's, wait, wait, it's holding a fucking elephant? Yeah, that's why I was holding oh. the picture up for you, so you could see the elephant. I'm sure it's a small oh, elephant. God. I'm sure it's, it's a small, small elephant. elephant, don't worry. Um, what would you guys, <laughs> would anyone here have any reasonable knowledge of, of anything related to, to rocks, I guess? Yeah, Would they I have... are famous creatures. You all have heard tales about them, like you might hear of dragons. Like on the same want. level of dragons, or are dragons typically regarded no, no, as no, more? No, 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 that level of fame, though. Yeah, you know? okay. If a dragon and a rock fought, how easily would a dragon? Dragon always kills everything. That's, Got it. You know. Um, someone give me... Is there some sort of lore check? And I'll read you some paragraphs. I have, um, why can't, can I run a nature check on this, honestly? Cause yeah, it's, give me a nature it's, check. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the lore I'm looking for here. Mm -hmm. Wait, dragons didn't kill William or, um... Finally. Dragons, Those were tiny dragons. Those, Those were baby sure, dragons, and bad. they were fucking badass. But, it happened. All right. Rocks lair, rock layers are vast nests made of trees, branches, and the like. They inhabit the highest mountains, uh, usually in the warmest regions. Clearly not in this situation. Rocks are not given to nesting close to one another, with a nest rarely being located within 20 miles of another. La la la, we don't care about this, we don't care about that. Rock range for food many times a day, about an hour after sunset, somewhere around noon, and usually an hour before sunset. If there are young in the nest, the fourth feeding, approximately two hours after noon, is added to keep the young strong and well fed. Rocks are occasionally tamed and used by cloud or storm giants. Good aligned giants not allow their rocks to be attacked by civilized creatures and the animals that guard them. What were the hours that they're not in the nest? Uh, they, like, sunrise, sunset, noon, and uh, if there's young in the nest, a few hours after noon. So um, I'll tell the party everything I know. So if we if we visit the nest in sunrise and sunset, it, it, it's um, we can maybe get in there, search for what, if there's a crown in there, and then get out. We could, yeah. I'm going to read like a little bit more to you, just in case there's any other clues in here you might need. Uh, rocks right. serve to keep down the number of large predators, and they are fond of onk eggs, purple worms, and harpies. Thanks to rocks' prodigious appetites, these creatures are not swarming around with impunity. It is said that rock feathers can be used to manufacture certain magical items here and there, including flying brooms. One race that has little love for rocks is dwarves. Dwarven mines located in remote mountains often have to contend with unruly rocks intent on protecting their territory. Attempts by dwarves to tame rocks have all met with failure, so the accepted manner of dealing with rocks is to kill them and smash their eggs. Adventurers uh, who happen on a community of mountain dwarves may find employment as rock hunters. Blah, 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 as long as no druids find out. Um, I think that's all that there is to say. Looking almost at... Do, 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 do. So rocks like are pretty them. aggressive, right? If you're in their territory, I guess. 
Think of them as just giant fucking eagles. They have about eagle intelligence and similar sort of territorialness. They're not in smart, you know, they're Okay, they're just so eagles aren't intelligent in D&D, &D, right? No, they're just Birds big birds. I don't think they're intelligent in real life, are they? In Lord of the Rings, they're... He's oh, saying in yeah, Lord of the Rings, they're like amazing. They're like, they're like um, angels, yeah. I've seen it, check, yeah. Um, all right, let's get scaling. Oh, sure. I feel a scale coming on. So are, are we all going to the? So, so are we all going, or should we send our best climbers and then wait because we just need to check it when, um, it's uh, during the hours, right? Can we um, maybe me, maybe Locke and I go, and then you guys. Maybe also, if we want to burn a spell, I can levitate someone up there. What levitate somebody all the way up a mountain? I can, yeah. Can and, and they'll, and they'll come down safely. Levitate goes 20 feet high. No, levitate goes um, 20 feet high every couple minutes, and then it goes infinitely. Ooh, yeah. Every round it goes 20 feet? I don't know if it's every round, but it's it's, it's around there. Let me look. Um, yeah, up Ooh. to 20 feet, um, remains suspended there, and then um, every... Oh, uh, yeah. You're yeah, right. Yeah, they can change it by either direction every turn. Yeah, so... So 20 feet around, 20 feet every six seconds. Yeah. So 200 feet a minute. Yep. Can you wow. um, use levitate to slow fall too? Out of curiosity. Uh, if you if I levitate you, you will and the spell ends. You will you will not drop. You'll 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 literally um you, you'll you'll literally be safe no matter what. There's no check. Okay. Like you'll you'll float gently to the ground. There's no problem. Yeah. Midori, can you take our two children um in your hands and he'll levitate you up? Okay. Wait. Why should wait? Why 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 should the Yetis go with Midori? Why should we send Midori? Um, yeah. What? Are, well, I mean, Midori doesn't have to come. That's fine. If well, I'm saying we levitate, we levitate one person one up. One of us? Yeah, so and then... They, they, I'll yeah, we'll... So I'll stay behind and watch the kids, okay? All right. Wait, why, uh, is levitating a spell slot thing? Yeah, it is. It's okay, a level two spell. Let's just climb. We're never, we're never doing this. We thing, can right? climb. We're, yeah, yeah, we're, we're not... Um, yeah. We don't want to waste a spell slot on this. We're not too worried about stealth or anything. I don't think we're on a other side of the mountain, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, as long as we so as long as we get into the the right hours, like we need to make sure it's sunrise yeah, or sunset, sure. whatever when we get it. Like, yeah. Um, real quick Wait, for to... the for the water, um, can I if I hop in the water, um, does it feel like I'm landing like on solid ground or is there a little bit of give or how does this work? It feels fairly solid. There is a, a wee bit of give. It's like walking on sand. That's a good way of putting it. It's like walking on sand. If I jump from a higher place, is this like a trampoline effect or? No, if you jump and land on the water, you'll probably break your legs. Okay, yeah, all right. Just Does right. he get to ch wait? If you dive in the water, you're fine. Though. Yeah, if I right? choose to totally. dive in the water, yeah. okay. yes. So should we send everyone to climb to get? To I get think we should just send or... captain the captain to climb. He this is his stealth mission. This is his time to shine. Oh. Okay. Uh, what is my quick escape if there is an issue? Do I just like? Can I just? I mean, you're the, the nimblest road? of us all. You should be able to escape right, yeah. quite quickly on your own. Okay. No. Can I have the Can I have the ring for this mission, just in case? Yeah, I mean, if you want to, sure. I give him the ring of water walking. Shit. I'm going to use it. Um, so here you are at the base of the mountains, and you're just going to, like, scale the mountain and then run around looking for a rock? Rock's nest? Well, hold on. I'm um, going to scale the mountain and see what I can see. With the, Barbo, I hope I can take the owl. Barbo, yeah. your, 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 uh, your escape is literally just jump off the mountain, and I'll levitate you, and then cool. um, you'll, you, you, won't, you won't die. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Please All right. be safe. I will. I'll be coming back for us, yeah. All right, I'm going to start scaling the mountain. Okay, give me an athletics check. Can I do acrobatics? Yes. Thank you. Ooh, quite nice. All right, let's start climbing our mountain here. Change your music to mountain climbing music. All right, you make it up the first section of this mountain pass, of this uh, this cliff right here before you. Can I do you a perception up... check? See if I yeah. see anything? Yeah, you get up like 400 feet. You can see out over the, the treetops, um, but there's nothing of interest to note yet other than your, your companions at your feet. Okay. Uh, so you've Fine gotten you know, a few hundred feet. Uh, where are you going to go? Because I know the map doesn't zoom in very much mm -hmm. more than max but how do you, i guess in there's our there's a lot of territory right this is nine square miles you're searching yeah. i was just gonna try and get to like the highest point i guess because that's where okay. i would assume the rocks would put their nest um as i get up the mountain like near the peak or whatever like near i would like to start like being way more stealthily um right. maybe looking around for signs and stuff like that but yeah okay 
Uh, well, you keep climbing and climbing and climbing, spend maybe a few hours going up fairly easy terrain towards the peak. At a certain point, you, you end up at like uh, the penultimate peak below the, the main one. You actually have to go down and back up again. And give me another perception check from up here. Um, before I do that, could like, because you were saying I was getting like areas and I'd stop and then have to go up like another part. On those mm -hmm. areas, am I able to like put some rope? Um, just like kind of like dangling, I guess, or whatever. Does that make sense? You so if I need tie to tie rope to things, yeah. So you can yeah, like tie rope around. It's like a rappel. Yep. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, perception. Fantastic. You spot on the west side of the island, northwest side of the island, there seems to be a group of people uh, that have stretched out some sort of creatures on racks down by the, the shore. Do they look like birds to me? They do not look like birds. Um, can I a... see anything with like my, can I see, I guess what I would think it would be? It's miles away. Like... Okay. It's just, you can see that people have are out there and they're sort of stretching something out over something else. Is it something else. big? Like, is the, is the stretching yeah. area big or kind of big? Yeah. So not a null. Um, I guess I'll take um, a note of where they are and then mm -hmm. continue climbing. Okay. So they were around there, Koiba? Yeah, around there. Okay. Fantastic. All right, and now you want to move more stealthily to the next section. So give me a stealth check and an acrobatics check in conjunction. God damn, your rolls are so good today. Jesus. This is insane. Yeah, that's just unreal. Yeah, just you, make your way, team, you... you make your way to the very tippy top of the mountain, the, the highest peak around. There's no rock's nest here, but you can survey everything. In addition to this group that you spot here, there is a, another group of people off on the far west side of the island. <clears throat> yep. Uh, they um, seem to just be trudging along the beach. So I see no rock's nest, like, anywhere. Mm-mm. And they, they're pretty big. You would no, notice I would one assume. of them here. Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't seen any rocks or anything, right? None of the kind you're looking for. Um, Actually, that's not true. That's not... As you're... I should have... They're big ass birds. You can't miss them in the sky. When you get to the peak, you can see that there is a rock out over the sea, uh, miles away, kind of searching. Searching for like food and like the water or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's probably looking yes. for something to dive down on. Um, I guess which way is he, which way is the rock flying searching for food? Is he flying like this way? At or... the moment you're asking, it is going this direction. Okay, I would like to, Um, it's not gonna like see me, right? Probably. I would like don't to use a height action. Okay. That'll be fine. You can fight. Don't you have like fancy footwork and stuff? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'd like to use a height action and then start to like repel down to go okay. back to my party. If I'm Excellent. just curious, if some bird were to grab you and like toss you from a very, very high place, as these large creatures usually do to kill their prey, do you like die instantly if you hit the ground or are we making saving throws? Or oh, we'll roll damage. Okay. Oh, that's not happening. I'm... How much damage is it to instantly kill a person? Isn't it uh, like if you do enough damage like twice their HP or something, you can instantly kill? If you bring them to negative their maximum HP, they die go. instantly. Okay. There's actually yeah. falling damage in the game, though. I think it's I think it's twenty d six, if I remember is, right. That's is it. the max? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which means that that averages out to fifty damage. So. Okay. You know. It's actually a little bit of an oversight in D and D because it's not that much. Like like, yeah. like later. Yeah. Nothing's fifth gonna edition, happen, guys. Really, you can jump okay. off hundred foot towers and survive in fifth edition. It's not actually a big problem. Okay, Tell it, guys. Yeah, All right, I'd like to start um, stealthily scaling down with my. Sure. Yeah. Just so you guys know, though, if if I'm going to deploy that tactic here, I'll drop you over the ocean so you die for sure. Wait, Wait why would you die, die for sure in the ocean? Because I'll have the rock fly you out into the water and let oh, you drop. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I have a... Yeah, so that's how I'm going to get around the you can't die from falling damage because 5th edition gives so much advantage to the players. Would I technically be able to live since I have my ring and I could like, get back up on the water? Oh, wait, I guess it'd be in the middle of the water and I probably wouldn't be able to like just... You'd have to no. land perfectly. Yeah, it would just be a mess. No, would... I, I get it. Yep, thank you. Yeah, you die. I would just rather stealthily yeah. climb down. Okay, you stealthily climb all the way back down to your party. You meet them later before... Just before afternoon. Um, I'll explain the t where they are, how I got to the top, and I didn't see a single rock's nest. But I did see a rock coming from what it looked like the fourth island, um, because he was flying out like, and I'll like show him the way um, towards 
there, so I think the rock nest might actually be on the fourth island. Do we want to go there, or do we want to... Wait, so all these people got it wrong? That's what it looks like. There's no rock nest here. I would have seen it. They're big. Well, that's good. I mean, in, in one yeah, way, that good. gives us... Well, and yeah, in one way, that gives us an advantage. In another way, if we run into the rocks, though, we're going to be left to deal with them on our own. Correct. Well, but we know that they are out of the nest a certain time, and that that rock just proved it. So we, okay. we we we're gonna we're gonna get an advantage on these this army by going forward and then getting to the rock nest before them and getting the thing before them. Yeah, then let's do it. Let's yeah. get to that island. Yeah, is we it, just have to help Barbo. Look like there's a big hill or anything, or are they just? Nope, there's no mountains, no hills, or anything on the fourth island whatsoever. Do rocks um? Do they even? I guess in our reading or whatever, do they? Stay on mountains, or can it just be anyway? They like nesting in high, out of reach places. Um, You're I'll explain. Probably wrong. Still, they're but, yeah. probably not on that island. <laughs> the carry, dude. Never mind, guys. They're probably not there. <laughs> probably not there. I'm not saying I wouldn't lie to you in this situation yeah. and hide them there and fuck with you, but all the intelligence you've ever gathered in your life tells you that they're somewhere on a mountain. Um, and they weren't on my mountain. I'm just glad you came back safe. Yeah, me too. Wait, no, so just... so they're not so they're not on that island to the northeast, and probably not. They're on probably. another mountain in this island, probably. Okay. They might be on the first island. Um, Are there other mountains, Neil, on this island? Uh, no. I love that picture. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Wait, which picture? Where? <laughs> Lily, oh, keeps, I missed it. Sorry, Lily. Lily keeps holding stuff up for us to see. Can I see it? I missed it. Love it. Can you show the good one you drew now? Wow. Okay, so we're going back to um I guess we would have to check out Billy's Island then or We are on Billy's Island right now. This is So that's the only mountain but there's no nest. Then what well, there's two more mountains, right? There's one on one and two. Oh, but but the, the guy that was driving us here specifically said the rocks are on three. We're just not, something's wrong. Something's up. They're here. It's just, we're doing something uh, wrong. Uh, uh. But Captain Barbell didn't see any. I, know I did look here. pretty well, I would say. Can you send your owl to go fly around and maybe see if you can Only scout Only 120 out? feet. Yeah, it's not much. Is there a chance that these could be, I mean, like, if we assume that these are guarding a magical island or, or a magical crown, could they also be hidden with magic as well? Hmm. Are they in the mountain? I was about to say, yeah. Would I have seen yeah. like a big cave, like anywhere on the mountaintops? Uh, possibly, probably not. I mean, yeah. it's a big ass mountain range, right? Big you ass just mountain. Climb to the top of the peak, and yep, you look, to look around, around. Up there. But there could be things on the sides. There could be yeah. nests on the sides of the cliff. There could be a cave. There's all sorts of places that you haven't checked. I still have my rope um, up, so it'll be easy if we all want to climb up together and search the hillsides more easily, Can but climb? we would um, bring them up with the levitation thing. If one person fails their check, it's going to be wicked bad. Um, I'm pretty sure we could all climb together and we could help each other out, no? We absolutely like you... could. We all have picks and we have ropes. We could yeah. like do it like yeah, mountain climbing. We could even tie ourselves to... Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what we do, yeah. Okay, yeah, because it's good. Mm. Maybe not... Or yeah, tie the gnome Maybe. to both of us, but not... yeah. Um, we could levitate you up, Midori, and we can bring... I don't, know. Us, I don't right? know why we're so eager to, to throw away our, our magic, guys. We should, this levitate oh, is, is this a spell slot? I doing. thought that it's, yeah, a level, it's a level two. It's a level yeah. two. Oh, yeah, we're okay, absolutely not levitating unless it's like a life or death situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, never mind. I thought that How it was hard just How hard is uh, it to climb this? How hard is it to climb it, Neil? When we have um, rope and stuff, pretty, like, advantage? Let me give you a DC for my notes. <laughs> uh, we could wait a day. I could climb to the top and like see where the rock actually flies to. But so climbing the mountain right here is a DC fifteen. That's really hard. Uh, or DC DC fifteen to do it quietly. DC ten to do it regularly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why can't That's we just have um? Why can't Captain uh, Chad or whatever? Or Barbo, why can't you just go to the top and wait for a rock to return home and see where they were? That's what I was in. saying. Yeah, yeah, I could actually do that. Let's That's just do that. Pretty smart. All right. Can I scale my way up again? 
Yep, you scale your way back up to the top of the mountain. Uh, it's afternoon by the time you get here, and you see no rocks in the sky at all, anywhere to be found. Can I just wait around and um, absolutely with, like, hide yeah. and see if I can see anything? Mm -hmm. Might even camp up, up here. Yep, it's like an hour later. Uh, one of them takes off from a spot right about here. Okay. Um, yeah, it just, there's nothing, and then all of a sudden from the mountain comes a giant-ass bird. The bird takes off and careens out over the ocean and starts, like, running up and down along this section of coastline searching for food. I'll wait for when he, like, starts um, running up a section of coastline, like, away from me. Mm -hmm. um, then I'll start climbing down. All right. You get to back to the party. I'll explain where I saw the rock. Um, it was about in the middle of the mountain. I just saw him come out, like, around here. So maybe that's where we should head. Yeah, we should probably all make our way closer to that spot then, yeah. Cool. So glad you came back safe again. That's Every what I moment do. you're gone, my heart beats. One sec. With anxiety. Yeah. At the mere thought of you never making it back alive, and leaving me behind with two children to care for myself. I have kids to look after, Midori. I'm not just going to leave them and you behind, okay? I, I know, I know, <clears throat> but sometimes I need the reassurance. I'm not Chad. No, you're not. Um, all right, I'll explain to Locke, and I'm say, let's get it, get her done. Yeah, let's go. How are we, uh, doing the yetis? Can I put a yeti, since you got a harness, can I tie him to me and, like, kind of bring him up? Yeah, you can bring the yetis with you and have them climb along. They are excellent climbers, actually. What Did are the yetis... you doing with Sorry. Damien? Dar uh, Darren? blue, blue. No, 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 <laughs> you're, you're a dude carrying all your shit. Oh, um... You can just hang out there. I'm gonna grab um, two rations from them. Hang out with the boat. Is he okay to do that? I yeah, mean, oh wait, hold on. Yeah. He's not gonna fucking leave us, right? Where would he go? He oh, just fucking just take the boat and leave? I, that's what I'm asking. I'm very no, skeptical. I'm not gonna take your boat and leave. All Jesus, right. how insulting. Um, yeah, we'll just leave him. Tell him to hang out. All right, you leave him with the boat. Excellent. I do explain to him. Don't build a campfire or anything too crazy. Don't you make might yourself attention. known. You see him just roll the boat upside down yep. and crawl underneath it and just hang out un inside the flipped over boat. <laughs> okay. I guess that's one way to hide. So he'll be right. out of sight and it'll be warm. So this guy, watch this guy's like a master rogue, like level 20. <laughs> um, okay, let's climb. Let's climb. Oh, I, went to, I meant to ask. Um, in our time with the Yetis, I guess two or two days now or something, um, do they seem like pretty intelligent creatures? These seem like imbeciles. Oh, all right, that's fine. Kind of like blockers. Take right? after their masters, I guess. Yeah. They Take after like a, a three-year-old intelligence level. That's fine, but they're they, cool with me, right? They still right. see us as their parents, right? All they want is food. Just but they like. Food. But we are training them, right? You're giving them food, and they seem to be enjoying it. It's only been what? And they're following hours? commands. Are they following commands now, or like, are they? Let's, let's it's be only honest. Been you hours. haven't had a lot of yeah. time to You're really right. test. This I out. mean, I can yeah. train at, a puppy to sit in two days easy. Lily, at CLG, we tried to once rescue a bunch of feral cats, and I put this thing in my room, and uh, it literally peed and pooped all over the place for a month until we finally. Like had to get like oh, had to like figure it. it out. No, we right. didn't kill. I just wanted to know a little bit. About that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all right, Lily. Our the point is, it was it's so. hard. <laughs> it's hard, and dogs are bred to be trained. These are wild yetis. It's all right. I roll. I roll twenties to my children. Now there are two ways of approaching this yeti cave. Cave or not yeti cave? Rock nest. Uh, one, you can find them and climb straight up to see them. And the other option would be to find a, a nearby spot that would be at the same altitude and then climb around to them. Uh, at I, present, you don't really know what the situation is around the nest. You just know on what side of the mountain it is and roughly its position. So I'd probably like rather... Can we maybe climb like up past it and then kind of like... I guess the goal would be to like rappel down. Yeah. Is that okay with the party? Yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah. You're the climber. All right. Not a shoveler. Uh, not a shoveler. That's right. Give me your climb check, everyone, to scale up here. It's going to be DC 10 athletics or acrobatics to get up the mountain to in position. Do we all have advantage since we're all um, tied together? Uh, yeah, and, like, you'll you can give help them ropes. Cool. And everyone's got advantage. Yeah, yeah. 
should not be a problem. I just want to make sure that we don't run into any fun issues of people falling 100 feet and dying. Oh, that sucks. Because they weren't yeah. tied in. Good. And your Yeti children climb with you without any problem. They just I, scamper up. I'd like to give Rock ba or Lock back his, uh, the ring. Okay. okay. Lock has the ring. Uh, you make your way across the mountainside. And let's see, how long has this been? It's been two, three... Four, five, six, <clears throat> seven, eight, nine hours from when we first landed. Nine hours from sunrise is late afternoon, or from yeah. So it's about late afternoon when you come to the edge of the cliff and look down and back and forth or something. You don't spot any rocks, but you do see on this section of the island right here. There is a campfire that has been built with smoke rising from it, and you can see small little people moving around. Now that we're closer, can I see what was stretched out at all, or no? Still pretty far? No, it's still a okay. few miles out. Um, and we don't see a rock flying around, right? No rocks to be seen. And how far what away time... is this campfire, real quick? Is this like hundreds of feet or like thousands of feet? Like, it's maybe... like miles? Two miles, maybe? Okay. Plus down yeah, okay. thousands yeah. of feet. Thousand feet. What times do the rock leave again, Gnome? Usually leave to go uh, eat. Noon, sunrise, and sunset. We should wait for sunset and then see if we can get in the cave. Yeah. Okay. Sure do enough, as the sun begins to set, the rock takes off and flies out to sea. Do rocks usually live alone? Or do they like live with like... They're, they're either in a mated pair or solo. All right. Um, since we haven't... All right. Uh, you guys ready to repel? Get yeah, in the cave? I guess. Yeah. All right. Can we repel into the you rock can. den? Now, I'm going to want... Barbo, I'm going to want you to go scout out the area and figure I out would, a way yeah. to get here. So give me your own climbing check before anyone else gets involved in anything. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> I am a, a descendant of Grimes. Seriously. I've like never seen anyone cousin. roll like this in a campaign ever. To be fair, that's plus six, so it's only a four. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Still, but that's like 14, 12, 14, yeah. 15. They're pretty okay. Yeah, he's doing so good. That's amazing. All right. You can scout down and find the right spot. You can see the nest once you get out to a certain ledge and hang your head over. You can see little bits of like branches sticking out. Uh, Does it look find... like there's one or there's nothing in there or... You can't see until you're in the nest. It's built like there's a, a, a what would you call like a, a divot in the got it yeah mountainside okay. yeah. Uh, you find a spot where you can come from like the side, and it's only a fifty foot journey to get from the the level ground across the, the steep sheer cliff to where the nest would be. Could I attempt to throw um like a little rock or something like in there on the ground to see if something will like perch up? It's going to be a difficult Or even like a dagger. I, can um, I attempt it? You're basically throwing across a horizontal surface and wanting uh -huh. it to go horizontal and in. So you need to throw like a curve ball with a dagger. So it's a tough shot to make. I'll try it. Give me, it give me a roll to hit with your yeah. dagger. Yeah. No, it, you lose it down the mountainside. It's yeah. gone forever. Idiot. Bye. <laughs> um, I'll it's try going to be yeah, no, man. It's a... Do, do, do a DC 15 athletics or acrobatics check to navigate this section of cliff to go this horizontal route because it's sheer and slippery and there's not a lot of good grips. Now from everyone or just me? From anyone who wants to climb into the nest. Okay. Now you have so climbing we... ropes and harnesses, so you could tie someone off and if they fall, they'll just fall yeah. 50 feet until someone can make a strength check and hold okay. them, but failed checks and multiple people fall and everyone dies. Got it. Uh, it is... 500, 400 feet to the snow and trees below. So it's quite a quite a drop. Okay. Um, I'll confer with the party and ask them if they feel comfortable with that. What, why don't we send one person up? Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to go. Um, can I go with Locke so we can have, like, a climbing buddy? Just for the... Would that help us climb at advantage? If we the other reason, the other reason why if only one person goes, I can levitate them if they fall. So then oh. that, 
yeah, yeah. That's why. Never mind. What that are we? Um, fun. what are we? But um, again, we, we want to avoid that because it's a big spell. What are we losing if we if we fail a check here? Are we like falling to you our death? Fall four hundred feet to your death. Do we have a, a chance to grab something or like? I'll give you recover. like a, a last chance save. Oh, like a recovery. Like a, you'll have to pass like a dex check and a strength Got check it. to grab and hold on, but you're probably gonna die. I'm gonna. I'll do it. Um, and I'll take one of the yetis because I'm assuming he can climb on his own. Or no, you said he's a really good climber. Do you want the, to send the Yeti over? Me and the Yeti. The Yeti and I. Yes, you can bring the <laughs> okay. Yeti and tow alongside with you. Thank you. All right. And are you? what precautions are you taking before you roll anything? Sorry. Or you can just roll but, it and it's fine. Don't um, worry about it. My bad. Jesus Christ. I was going <laughs> to attempt to... Um, well, I mean, there wasn't going to be much for precautions. I, was I mean, maybe you were going to tie a rope to yourself so that if you fell, you wouldn't die. But I'm assuming Ooh. you're free climbing like this and you just... Free climb over to the, to the nest. Yeah. I had a rope this on the Yeti. Great over here, dude. Me and the you Yeti. And <laughs> the Yeti make it to this nest. It's this huge nest, bigger than anything you've ever seen before. And perched in the middle of it are three rock babies, but they're like at least four times your size. Um, can I attempt to like be stealthily so they don't see me? Yeah, give me a stealth check. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Quinn. You're so good. Your stealth <laughs> I'm so is so sorry. great. Your Yeti climbs over the edge and screams and runs at it, claws out, and <laughs> to go eat the the rocks. Uh, well. And uh, we're going to start combat to be... now because the rock sure. eggs are definitely engaging and you're now Wait. by yourself alone. I did have the well, Yeti on stealth? me. Um, the Yeti was tied to me, though. So is the Yeti dragging you... you to the... Wait. Is the Yeti going to drag me or can That's I like terrible. resist? Obviously, the Yeti is going to scream. <laughs> And stuff. Aren't you hidden? Like, wait. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was Not stealth. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Clovia oh, said, I'm tired of these rolls, dude. Um, Why did you even take the Yeti with you? So yeah. I wanted my little buddy, dude. Okay, well, you got it. <laughs> oh, your little buddy, buddy has blown your stealth. And so oh, has, no. Hey, I might actually have to use the little buddy as a distraction. I, As he's fighting or whatever, I'm going to stealth in and attempt to see if I can see a crown or something. Well. That's this right. is where we would roll for combat, but okay. this combat's definitely going to run over our time, and this is a perfect cliffhanger moment. So why don't we come back next week oh. with the rock cave? All right. Not the, the Yeti. Yeah, the rock cave. And that <laughs> at Barbo's death. Oh, my God. We're going to end well. it here. Right. Oh. We're going to end it here. This is the spot. Yeah, well. that's a literal cliffhanger. Okay. Oh, nice job, Lily. Nice. Good one, Lily. <laughs> Thank you. So you guys will have to come back next week if you want to see the thrilling conclusion of tonight's episode. And uh, yeah, Stephen, you want to take it away? Um, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. It's been fun this week. Uh, we'll run through and do our shoutouts. Um, I'm Destiny. Obviously, my website is Destiny.gg. Um, I believe to the right of me is Midori, a.k.a. Lily Pichu. Hello. Yeah. Okay, and then to the right of her is uh, Gerald Knott, a.k.a. Devin, a.k.a. Malixia. Am I doing an outro? Yep. All right. Yo, that's it. It's the end of the show, and that means it's time for some rhyming flow. I'm Malixia, twitch.tv slash Malixia is my place, and I'm bringing you the after show for D&D &D right into your face. So come to my channel and discuss our show and get some cool extra info and be in the know. All right, and then nice. to the right of Devin is Mr. Lucas. Uh, hi, I'm Mr. Mooten. Uh, I stream almost every day on Twitch. Please sub to me so I don't have to go to college anymore. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thanks. that's uh, pretty direct. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, Neil, I guess you can play us out. I am Neil Gallery Quick with Pass Erickson, and I do a bunch of D&D stuff on my channel all the time. Their next show is tomorrow morning for US, US viewers or evening for UK viewers, 10 a.m. Pacific time, twitch.tv slash koibu. It is called Kuban Nights, and it deals with events happening at the same time frame, but in a different part of the world. So that's that. I'm done. Awesome show, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs> uh, we should for be you. back here next week at the same time. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll catch you next week. Peace out. Yeah, bye. Bye.